Hey everyone, how's everyone doing? Um, today we're going to try a couple of things with audio once again, <laughs> but I think that, you know, maybe it won't work. Um, I realize that we need a mixer, even if it's like a virtual mixer, to uh, be sure that, um, that both channels are not like disturbing each other. But we're going to try to see if it works with the setup that we have today. You guys have to let us know because what was happening yesterday that Tanny, Danny was in a, in a tin can um, was that uh, uh, one microphone is picking up uh, the stuff that is supposed to be the input for the other microphone. So we're getting that kind of weird echoey sound. Um, if that's happening today, just let us know and, and Danny will turn off her mic once again and that'll be that. Um, so that's the first thing. So just let us know that. So, Dani, di algo para que... Hey, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just let us know if my sound is still horrible. So <laughs> I can turn we'll off the mic. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I, I promise everyone that we'll figure it out. Because I think yesterday when you guys were telling us that it sounded like, like she was in the bathroom, <laughs> we just didn't get it. We just didn't understand why. So no, they're well saying pretty good. Audio, so oh, good, good. Fine. So uh, the the issue would be with Danny's, you know, that, that she would have like a weird kind of echo. So if that starts, you know, sounding weird, just let us know and, and we'll try to uh, work around it. So that's uh, one thing. Oh Before we start, oh give me. We changed the oh, yeah, so we changed the uh, clicky yeah. keyboard. So it should be bad, but not as bad as yesterday. <laughs> That's the last couple of days. Um, I have a clicky mouse. I just noticed, though. So the mouse is always going to click. So if the mics pick up on any of those things, you know, we, that's, we can't do anything about that. Um, or at least for now, we can't do anything about that. Uh, first or order of business, we have to do the raffles for the month of September. Uh, so yeah. these, these are the people that donated 20 bucks or more through our website, our paintedlives.com. There is a donate button there. And if you donate 20 bucks or more, uh, you're in the run to get this painting. La de la rifa, sí. linda. No, pero una por una. Que aquí me, me quedo, sí. No, 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 esta. So the one that we're raffling today is this one. Is this Cortázar. Um, I took a lot of liberties ton of distortion, ton of weird shapes, but it was really fun. It was a, a really fun painting to uh, to do. So here are all the names, and I'm just going to pick no, randomly. I'm looking. Higher. Okay. Yep. I'm closing my eyes. I'm going to pick randomly. Yes. And the winner is uh, Ksenia Galper. Ksenia Galper. Here's the name. I'm hoping... No, you're blocking, you're blocking it with your hand. Okay, okay, but <laughs> no, no, we'll, we'll make it work. Yeah. Kesenia Galper. I hope I'm not butchering your name. I apologize, Kesenia. Thank you so much, Kesenia. So this will be headed your way. We, we always FedEx our um, donation, you know, paintings uh, anywhere in the world. So you could donate from anywhere in the world if you have a PayPal account. That's, like, super easy. And this is a weird one because... Uh, for this month, I actually did a large painting for the donation. They're usually a, a little bit smaller. Uh, and, and it is strange because the one that we are raffling amongst the people that bought, that uh, purchased some of the paintings, that are supporting us by purchasing some of the paintings, some of the uh, daily paintings, is this one, which in theory you could say, oh, you know, it's a less resolved painting. Um, y the other one is kind of bigger. It's just... You know, that it has more detail. I don't know. But I could tell you right now that this is like a super subtle painting. I haven't been able to varnish it still because there's some areas that are a little um, wet still. Um, but it was a super tough painting to do, and I actually really, really liked it. Uh, paintings that have to work with, with very little are usually super tough paintings to solve. So I, I actually really like this one. I like all the tiny little drawing marks. They're, they're very few, but they're very, very important um, this kind of disappearing tone, the irregular um, edge on on Danny's uh, left side, our right, 
I, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit and just having a tiny, tiny bit of um, uh, of a higher uh, hierarchy in, in the ear, just um, understanding that form as a focal point in the painting. But again, it's super tiny. And then just the design of this hair, uh, it's, it's really nice. I, the paper won't really, and this is the, the, the paper that we used yesterday, by the way. Uh, this watercolor paper, paper won't really shine if you overwork it. Um, so trying to understand these shapes and the gestures and, and just laying down, you know, barely enough color. It's, it, it's, it's almost like just enough to say the things that you want to say and, and then let them be. It's super, super difficult. So it may not seem like it, but it's a very difficult painting to do. So the winner for this painting, and because this one hasn't dried yet, I'm going to take it away, is, this is going to be amongst the people that, um, yeah, that bought, that purchased paintings during September. Uh, let's go with this one. That was quick. Uh, Jeanette Jones. So thank you, Jeanette. Uh, this painting will be headed uh, your way. Thank you so, so much for your support. Thank you for everyone. Honestly, I, I think that um, almost every single person that uh, donates or purchases, uh, you know, donates through our website or purchases paintings, they realize that what they're doing is in many ways subsidizing um, the fact, the, you know, us producing and doing videos for people that wouldn't be able to afford a painting and, and you know, they're in a position that they really enjoy the videos, but they, um, they can't donate and we're totally, totally fine with that. So we're very, very grateful for the people that, that can be um, extremely generous and, and can send us, um, you know, can support us through donations. Uh, and I think that those people understand that they're doing it because they really like what we're doing with the channel. And um, if they can get a painting out of, you know, donating 20 bucks, then that's awesome. But I always feel that people uh, purchase who purchase our paintings or donate um, they're always doing it first because they they really really enjoy um, our work and you know they, they they can see the hard work that goes into into what we do so we're very appreciative of that we're we're super super uh, grateful for all that generosity so uh, enjoy your paintings thank you so much for uh, for your support yeah and also remember that this month's um, raffles are open till the end of the month so yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna be leaving for my workshop um, in a couple of weeks, but I'll, I'll let you guys know. So there's gonna be a week that there's not gonna be videos, but we'll let you guys know um, with time. So for today's painting, we were actually gonna try something really dumb out with Danny, and Danny actually took some pictures of me, but I looked horrible, and it really wasn't working as an image. And I just grabbed a broom and I did uh, some of the stretching that people were suggesting yesterday to do um, for my shoulder. And I told Danny, oh, we have to do this. We have to do like a, a stretching picture. It's going to be perfect. And we tried it out and the pictures are terrible. Uh, I don't blame it on Danny. I blame it entirely on the model, which is me. I usually, I'm usually a terrible person to paint so no, they i were looked at them no they yeah were they were weird cool like no no but they were terrible and um i don't know i maybe felt um i maybe felt that uh, that it, it wouldn't it would be a, a nice kind of joke but it wouldn't be like a cool painting so then i started thinking um you know what's kind of cool if we could find other ways that other people used to stretch you know in the past or do exercise in the past and I was looking at like vintage uh, stretching photographs or like uh, photos of gymnasts um, in the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. Those are so cool. So, so cool. But um, every time I liked something and I was like, oh, I'm going to paint this, it, it gave me like a super Mikhail Boreman's uh, vibe. And I was like, oh, if I do this painting, it's going to totally look like a Mikhail Boreman's. And I don't know if you guys know Mikhail Borremans. Si quieres puedes linkearlo a Borremans ahorita. Danny's going to link some some um, some images. Que lo linke o las pongo en la página. Ah, las puedes poner si quieres. Sí, sí, sí también. So I thought it was it was going to have that vibe, uh, but then 
I I found this machine that I think a ton of people are are um are familiar with, and that's the photograph that we're gonna use for our painting today. That it's that vibrating belt machine. You know, you're supposed to put it on your belly, and it just it had a motor, or I guess you know, in the 1850s, because I read this this thing was invented in the 1850s, but it was it became popular only until the 1930s. So I mean, it's an invention that lasted and, and <laughs> stood the test of time apparently because um, uh, since its conception and after it being used uh, it was like what 80 years uh, so apparently people knew that it existed but didn't take it as seriously as they eventually did in the 1930s and um, of course it's a ridiculous machine it's just a, a, a belt that's uh, that vibrates because it's uh, it's tied to a motor. It's linked to a motor. And uh, I guess the first machines were mechanical, but then eventually they had this motor. And I have no idea if they work. I have absolutely no clue if they work. I'd be willing to try it for sure. You know, if somebody told me that they had one of these, I would put my belly around it. And <laughs> I, would, I would stay there for like half an hour just burning fat. But... um. As someone who was uh, quite obese when I, when, you know, when I was a kid, I could tell you right now that I feel that uh, this machine was meant for me. So um, I'm going to you know, paint the hell out of this photograph today. We'll see. I don't know, if, uh, I don't know about the guy's uh, portrait up there, but I just love the, the arc of the body. And I think we, we, we can do um, like a really nice painting. So it's going to look weird. I think that it's going to look super strange, but it's going to be fun. So... Um, I, I've always told you guys, painting has to be fun for me. So, uh, I'm gonna start if I can find it. I'm gonna start with a drawing, but I'm not gonna do a drawing like I did yesterday. I think yesterday's drawing was um, was a little too structured, even for, like for me. But I'm gonna start because I want to fit the whole body in. That that's the the only reason that I'm gonna use um, my drawing today, just to make sure that I. I can fit the body, like the whole body in, and I want to see what my proportions look like because I have this weird tendency to just make everything bigger, everything. You know, it doesn't matter. If you give me a facade of a building, it won't fit. Like, my painting won't fit. It doesn't, doesn't matter how big it is. Um, if I get a little too excited with, with the image that I'm making, and I usually get overly excited by anything that I'm painting, um, things don't fit. So, so I'm, I just want to make sure that I, before I start painting, in my mind, I have like the right proportion for, for this painting. So it's going to be fairly quick just to get, you know, just to get an, uh, an idea of, of the, um, the shapes. Um, at the beginning, you were talking about um, the raffle painting that you hadn't, uh, yeah. varnish it and yeah they're asking what varnish do you use on the paper so i would use liquid and in yeah. that paper i have to be super careful but because uh liquid does have like a tone to it it has like a yellowish tone to it and it will stain the paper uh so i try to so if this was my painting let's say i would try to keep you know my varnish alongside those kind of weird margins it's it's very you know Honestly, it's not it's not a perfect thing, but because I I had used liquid during the painting, I've noticed that the best option is just to keep using it um, throughout the whole painting. So, yeah, so liquid is not a varnish. I, I'm not saying that liquid should be understood as a varnish, but as a medium that's very sticky and glossy and dries very quickly and it's kind of flexible. The bad thing is that it it just transforms when it dries. But uh, aside from that, and that's like actually like a big deal. Uh, aside from that, it's it's fairly stable, I would say. Um, so so yeah. So I use it as a varnish. If it yellows over time, which it probably will, although I've seen paintings that have many many years. I I, I would say that I've seen some of my paintings that have over ten years where I've used liquid. Um, I haven't been able, and I'm being completely honest here, I would tell you guys, I, I told you guys yesterday that 
I saw some of the paintings where I did my dumb, you know, wax experiments suffer because of my ignorance. So if if I noticed that there was something really terrible with those paintings, I would tell you guys. Like, I would have no issue in telling you guys. Um, but n I didn't notice anything that made me believe that the um, – that the painting had yellowed, you know, terribly. So, so I feel confident that um, that it's going to be okay. the The bad thing, and and probably restorers would would hate, you know, having to deal with a problem of a uh, with a painting that uh, where liquid was used, because liquid. I don't even know how you dissolve liquid. Um, when it has dried, I think you probably need like a super strong um, solvent, and you know that's not good. That's not a good thing. If you if you need a super strong solvent, we were saying yesterday how the painting can suffer when you're trying to pick up that what would be the uh, varnish layer. So yeah, so you run some risks. Um, just be okay about running those risks. If you are all about longevity, if you're all about non-yellowing or reducing the yellowing, yeah, this is probably not for you guys. But uh, but if you don't care that much and if you understand that the painting's still going to be stable, you know, it's not like you're doing anything ridiculous to your painting, um, it's totally fine. So what I do nowadays is I do a, a very – a very thin layer of liquid, and then I put you know, uh, when that dries, which takes probably a couple of days, maybe one or two days. Um, I use the wax on top in some paintings, not in every single painting, but when I want to, I use the wax on top, and I feel it's it's perfect. So, if you want to be as um, as terrible as I am in uh, with my varnishing efforts, you can do that. So this is going to be good enough. I'm probably going to be shifting my drawing um, constantly while I paint. I just wanted to have a sense of of the sort of overall proportions of the figure that I'm going to have to deal with so I can fit the figure in the page. But I think this is going to be cool. I just need to – I'm probably going to exaggerate this a little bit more, I feel. But that's going to be cool. And the palette is going to be the same palette as yesterday. I'm not I wasn't really sure what to do with color. Like if I want to make it like a carnival esque, I feel um I could put some of that like a lizard in the back and I feel that that would be kind of kind of cool. Maybe we'll do that. It's not like we have tons of options in terms of um hues. I mean, I could do like an earthy orange, I could do reds. Reds I can totally do. Blues, only a blue violet. Greens, not really. It would be like a like an earthy gray green because you know that ochre is gonna condition a lot what's gonna happen with the greens. So yeah, I can't really push my hues so much with this palette, but maybe maybe we'll go with the lizard and, and see how that goes. No sé si Nico llegará a leer esto, pero claro, que siempre. <laughs> pero que quería dar las gracias por el consejo el otro día de no corregir mis colores por mi daltonismo. Resulta que Sorolla usaba mucho los verdes también y no sabía. Muy bien, es Sergi, sí. sí. Muy bien, muy bien. Sí, claro, que se me hace maravilloso que uno, pues, o sea, no, ma no maravilloso ser daltónico, o sea, eso, pues, es una condición que, que obviamente puede ser eh, súper incómoda en, en, en muchas situaciones, me imagino, me imagino. Eh, pero yo creo que para la pintura o, o para las artes visuales puede ser súper interesante, puede ser una cosa súper bonita, eh, como incluso hasta como argumento artístico, yo diría que es súper chévere que lo que uno siente que uno está haciendo para uno es percibido de una manera distintísima por el espectador. Y, o sea, eso es súper bonito, la, esa idea de que uno ve su propio trabajo de una manera totalmente distinta al, a la forma como la percibe el observador. Es curiosísimo, porque pues en las artes visuales uno trata de comunicar mediante la imagen. Entonces, si esa imagen, digamos que nuestra, nuestra noción de esa imagen ni siquiera comienza siendo una noción universal, o sea, lo que yo hago no es lo que va a ver el espectador, eso es súper chévere. O sea, 
me puse mi, mi casco de, de como profe o artista contemporáneo y se me hace re interesante eso. Eh, what's the longest you've gone without painting and why, if you don't mind sharing? Oh, wow, probably when I take vacations, but, you know, we don't take vacations that often. I mean, and if we do, it's probably like a week. I don't think we've ever taken longer vacations. No. Or, de lo que me conoces, como que... Los, mm, o sea, que yo haya parado por alguna vacac por vacaciones o por algo así. No. Yeah, probably a week. No, no I'm, at, well, I'm thinking about the, like big projects yeah so yeah i cannot think before that yeah. <laughs> i don't remember before that anything don't remember anything yeah. about <laughs> us before that yeah um yeah no if i'm if i'm being super super honest i i feel that i you know i'm the sort of person that um i'm so used to feeling comfortable when i paint it's almost like painting is what brings me um like this sense of being leveled that if I don't do it, my hands itch. Like, I, I, I feel like I can convince myself that I'm, you know, on vacation with Danny, w vacations with Danny or with um, Danny and the kids. But, um, you know, and I can kind of tell myself, okay, you know, this is going to be eight, nine days where, where I don't work. But, uh, but when I, you know, when, I, when we, we get back, I, I really want to work. I really want to get back to work because... I don't know. It's not work. It's um, like I said. It, it probably sounds um, super rosy and and maybe a little too um, cheeky and and uh, like overly romantic. But I just I need it. I need it. I need it to understand everything. Like this is the tool that I use to make sense of things. So when I can't make sense of things, like I I don't know. I get anxious. I I get a little bit antsy, so yeah, probably a week, but that's not that doesn't mean anything. That's just me. Doesn't mean that oh serious people rest a week. You know, go a week without painting. No, no. It's just me. And I and many times like I'll tell you that, but I'll also tell you about the many times and this is very this happens very often. And um Danny's here and I and I always talk to Danny about this. Sometimes I tell her that I'm tired, like I'm, I'm kind of physically or mentally tired. And that to me is very normal, but I, I try to push through. I also feel like it's interesting when you kind of push through um, that, that feeling of being not burnt out, but just, you know, your mind is just, oof. it's just saying, hey, th this is not just about painting, I think. I never get tired about the physical aspect of painting. Like I could paint for hours and hours and hours and hours. Like that that's not an issue for me. Um, but the thinking about painting, reflecting upon painting, I think that that sort of stuff weighs down on you because if you do it properly, I feel that that's not something that that's easy to deal with. So um, I think that's the hard part. But don't ever feel bad. Like if you want to take a month off and not paint awesome that's fantastic that would be super cool like if i could take a month off to play video games which i you know don't have that much time to do anymore i would love that i would i would be totally up for that so how do you get mo models to pose for your drawings i'm new to this you you um get into a relationship with them <laughs> that's uh the <laughs> best <laughs> plan best plan that you could do <laughs> is just say oh my god in my case oh my god she is the most beautiful human being i've ever seen in my life um yeah. i'm gonna ask her if we could be partners for life so <laughs> no uh, but you cannot say get in, get in a relationship with danny i mean they cannot get in a relationship oh yeah with no, me, no, so no no <laughs> not with you i mean they have to find their danny you know whomever <laughs> they are but um, but for me it was you. So it's it's that or have kids or <laughs> I mean no just I've I mean I've painted um, Danny. Danny knows that I I taught at the university. I taught um, life figure drawing. Also painting was not life painting, but um, fi uh, drawing was life figure drawing. And 
I have a very, uh, very, very close relationship to the models that work here in Bogota. I mean, I don't know all the models, but I think I, I could probably tell you that I know uh, probably, what is it, 90% of the models that work here in Bogota. They're super nice, they're, they're amazing people, super hardworking. I've worked with them not only at the university, but um, with a friend. We used to have like a, a studio that uh, people were, where it was more of like a, I mean it was directed, but it was more of like an open studio um, at where we worked for 18 weeks. Yeah, I think it was 18 weeks for the semester, so it was basically a semester also. And we also had, we were painting from life, and we also had the models that would work at the university. And some of the uh, models that work at the university, uh, or, or that work professionally, let's call it like that. Um, I've, I've used, um, I've worked with them. I, I've used images that, that I've uh, made from them, either from photographs or from life, uh, for some of my paintings. So, you know, you can, you can find some of them in some of my paintings. But if you, you know, if, if, if you're alone and that's totally fine, um, and your family is maybe out of town or you don't talk to them or you don't have a good relationship with them or, and you don't have a partner, and that, again, that's totally fine, just paint yourself. You know, you, you have yourself. You, you don't really need anyone. You just, you know, you paint yourself. You, you, it's, it's kind of nice to um, acknowledge that you paint what you have around you. And, and there's nothing kind of nicer than painting the uh, people that surround you and, and hopefully surround you with love. So that is, that is my case. I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by, by really awesome people. So, so those, are, those are my models. Do you photograph your paintings after varnishing? Any photographing tips? Um, yeah, I do. I sometimes because we are we're trying to get photos up for the uh, web page or you know I'll take photos of some of the paintings that I I don't feel are super affected by the fact that they um, that they haven't been bar varnished but uh, but I I end up var you know I end up taking uh, a photo once again after I varnish it so I always do that and I take photos and I also scan the paintings in a very cheap scanner. It's like absurdly cheap, our scanner. It was probably... ¿Tú te acuerdas cuánto costó? Sí. ¿Te acuerdas que lo compramos? Sí. So, so it was 90,000 pesos, which is, uh, I don't know. Como 25 Yeah, 25 bucks, maybe. It's our, our scanner. And if your scanner goes up to like 600 DPI and, and you can just tell it to scan your painting and it fits in the flatbed, um, you're fine, you're totally fine. And if you have some Photoshop skills, uh, that is totally fine. You're gonna, be, you're gonna be completely, completely fine with the, um, with the resolution you get. You get, um, when, when you scan paintings, there is a, a kind of, I guess, sacrifice that you have to make and it's in the shadows. Because light, you know, it's, it's so, so bright. The light that it's hitting your, um, your image is so, so bright. It actually goes through your darks and, and, and then reflects back the color. So the darks may be a little bit, not washed out, but they may not be as dark as you, you know them to be in your painting. Um, so you would have to adjust for that a little bit. But again, if you have some Photoshop skills, that's totally fine. Many times I am willing to sacrifice that, the, um, the, the kind of tone of my painting for the uh, resolution, for the bump in resolution, because you're gonna get like a super, super nice image. Um, and if you want to print it, or if you want to eventually make, you know, make prints of it or, or, or um, publish it in, in some way, you're gonna have a, a perfectly fine image to do that, so. But if you're taking photographs, yeah, uh, I, I, I take my own photographs. I started taking my own photographs ever since I paid for a bunch of, of photographs. I paid for uh, a photographer to, you know, to uh, take photographs of my paintings many, many years ago. And it was so expensive that I was like, forget it. I'm just going to 
you know, buy a good camera and, and learn how to do this because I can't be paying, you know, a, um, a professional to do this job. I mean, this is no, I'm not throwing any shade to photographers. I'm just saying that it is something that's very expensive and they, you know, they probably totally deserve the money that they're asking for. It's just that I wasn't able to, I wouldn't have been able to pay for that um, my whole life. So I started many years ago with um, just a, a, a re very regular uh, digital camera. I remember it was nothing special, but if you have a tripod and if it's a good enough lens, you have no trouble because you essentially have no trouble because what you're doing is you are putting your, you know, you're, you're painting on a surface or on the wall where there's no, um, you know, the most uniform light that you can get on your painting, the best. If that means having two spotlights on each side, each, each of them pointing at your painting, great because they cancel, you know, each other out and it's going to be, you know, perfectly even. I find that shooting like that, it's, it's, it's really nice, but I actually like how paintings look under um, just more diffused light. So, for example, with what we do here, we could have bigger light boxes just, you know, hitting the painting or, or uh, bouncing off the ceiling, but we have uh, softer lights that are bouncing off the ceiling, and you get like a more organic feel for your painting. It doesn't feel like glossy and plasticky, which is something that I've never liked about my painting. So. Um, so yeah, so uh, lights, uh, we try to bounce them off indirectly, but any space that, it's, that is diffused would work perfectly. Even if it's like on the darker side, if, even if it's like shade, it doesn't matter. Just let your camera, you know, uh, uh, take 20 seconds to take that photograph and you're totally fine. And um, if you have a, a, you know, a camera where, where you can change lenses, Usually the like the optimal um, f-stop the optimal aperture for your lens where it has the best kind of optics is around f8 or f9 So if you if you always take your photos at f8 f9 and um, You know and then again, you know let it let your camera shoot whatever however long it takes uh, for that photo to to be cor um, correctly exposed then do it all you need is a tripod uh, put it on an aperture f8 and you're totally totally fine. So yeah, just again diffuse light Just try it that it's um, that you don't get any kind of like hot spots in your painting because it's they're gonna glare It's gonna be ugh, it's gonna be really annoying um, If you have lenses pick any lens you, you you have it doesn't have to be super expensive We have like a nice camera with a very nice lens, but it doesn't have to be that way Like that wasn't the case for me, uh, you know when, when I started painting so don't worry about that and and just uh, timer f8 and you're fine. You're gonna be totally fine. And if you have some Photoshop skills to just tweak it after you take the photo, perfect. You're gonna be you're gonna be totally fine. You don't need anything else. If you don't have anything like that, just buy a cheap scanner and you're good. And if you're painting small paintings like like we're doing, cheap scanner, you're good. Can I paint with oils on any type of paper without primer? Well, that's what I'm doing. So. Um, it would be dumb for me to say no. So yeah, short answer, yes. Pero I mean, no, pero si puedes. Lo, uh, for example, um, Bacon has a bunch of paintings on, on paper and they're oil on paper and it makes sense because he never cared about, you know, what happened with his paintings. That's, that's how he approached his uh, larger paintings by painting on, on raw linen, unprimed linen. So you know, when he did his paintings on, on paper, um, they were not, they were, they were, you know, very loose pieces of paper. So, uh, kind of thin pieces of paper, no weight to them, no nothing. So, um, yeah, you can do it. Again, that means that there's going to be a sacrifice. There's an inherent sacrifice to that, but you can totally do it. They're asking what you were sketching with. Oh, uh, I, I said it yesterday, but I'll say it uh, obviously again. It's a, it's a water soluble, it's a water soluble um, um, color pencil. So it's like a watercolor pencil, but it doesn't matter, you know. <laughs> I'll I promise that in the upcoming weeks I'll use my daughter's you know color pencils that she uses for school, and they're gonna be fine. 
pensando en descans descansar ese hombro problemático, ¿qué tal sería una semana de pintar con la mano izquierda? De paso testear cuánto de la gracia está en la mano y cuánto en la cabeza. Uy, eh, una parte grande en, en la mano, estoy 100% seguro. No, y tú con la izquierda no sí, sabes hacer nada. No sé hacer nada hoy, pero... <risa> no, pero acuérdate que hablamos la vez pasada de eso, de lavarse los dientes. Con sí, la izquierda y tú izquierda no, es muy torpe, no sí. puedes. Mi izquierda es muy, muy torpe. Entonces, creo que sería hasta bonito como, como tratar de ver si, ese, si esa ausencia de control se puede, puede manifestarse como cosas chéveres dentro de la pintura. Seguro, seguro. Eso, eso puede ser súper interesante. If I just paint from life, like still life, etc. Yep. Will that inform my figure work? Figurative work, sorry. Yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, the the way I think um, one of the uh, in one of the weeks that we did in one of the prior weeks that we did, we were talking a little bit about that. It was like the elephant week that you don't really I don't know anything about elephants. Like I, I wanted to paint elephants because I mean, out of Capris, really. But I was doing it just to see myself painting an elephant you know it, it's kind of exciting when you when you've never painted like a subject matter and you tell yourself oh let me give this a shot let me try to paint this subject matter that i've never really approached in my life and the truth is sure if you inform yourself if you if you you know do a bunch of drawings um that have to do with comparative anatomy and and you're trying to understand how you know how the the um, anatomy of this um, being that you've never painted compares to whatever knowledge that you have from you know our own anatomy and 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 that instructs you in a way and that's kind of giving you clues as to what to do when you do your your painting fine that's great I, I'm never going to be opposed to knowledge like how could you ever like be how could you ever say that the more you know it's a is a bad thing But what I also was trying to argue with, with that week was that, you know, it's kind of pointless to try and say, oh, I want to get good at painting X, Y, or Z. Like, it, it, it doesn't matter, you know, this, what subject, whatever subject matter you can imagine. And I always kind of joke and I say, oh, it, it, it could be a raccoon because raccoons are very tough to draw. I mean, I'm just trying to be absurdly arbitrary and saying whatever pops into my mind and, and, and I just say, oh yeah, those things are hard to draw. But imagine saying that for every single subject matter in this universe. Like, when are you going to have the time to study everything in this universe so that you can feel confident enough to paint it? So it can't be, it can't be that the only way to paint, to get good at painting something is if you study it and you paint it, you know, incessantly and if you paint it constantly and if you know You know, if you're familiar with it to a point where you're like, okay, I could paint it with my eyes closed. Um, no, that can't be. I mean, if, if anything, it just that reflection helps us to understand that, no, you know, it, it, painting would be the most kind of inefficient and absurd thing in the world if the only way to, to be able to paint something was by, um, you know, uh, uh, exclusively making that your subject matter for an amount of time where you felt that you um, you became familiar with it, you became close to it, and you understand it kind of um, essentially. So, no, you know, I started painting elephants. I, I, I can't tell you right now that, yeah, you know, that I ticked that box, like now I know how to paint elephants. No, that was never the point. The point was like to say, you know, you could take a subject matter that you, you know, maybe it sparks your interest in some way, Um, and you can say, let me see what happens if, I, if that becomes my, my subject matter, you know, my, my, my object of painting for a week. Let me see what, what that feels like. And let me see what I, what I learn from it. But, but again, I, I probably, I could tell you right now, yeah, for sure, I, I probably learned more about elephants or the, the way I could construct a, a, um, an African elephant um, after that week. But I also realized that I didn't need those things. I didn't need that knowledge to approach painting an elephant in the first place. So, yeah. So I always, I, I, I always told people, like, if you want to get good at painting a portrait, you could paint a chair, paint a hundred chairs. 
because it has nothing to do with painting a portrait. It has more to do with painting. And if you get good at painting, then you could paint anything you want. It doesn't matter what's in front of you. You're just going to be, you know, doing, replicating the same exercise. So, um, so yeah. So I, I believe more in the power of painting than in the um, in the need to be um, knowledgeable about every single thing we paint. Does that mean that being knowledgeable about the things that we paint? is a bad thing no of course not that does not mean that like again the more you know the better that's uh you know i would never i, I would be very very stupid if i fought against that um but but that doesn't mean that you know out of uh, curiosity or, or out of ignorance uh, you can't say oh let me try let me give this a shot let me try and paint this and see how it goes no, maybe super interesting things happen when you say those things also. So you're, you're coming from a very, um, very innocent mind. Like, that's a very innocent mindset. And, and tons of cool things can happen when you do that. So They are asking about the reference photo. Like, yep. if you know the man or where did you get the oh photo? Oh, no. That's, I, know the, I know Google. And um, no, no, no. I don't know this person. This is probably from the 20s or, you know, if I had to guess, it was it's probably from the 20s or 30s, maybe. Um, so, yeah, I don't know the exact date. They didn't have the exact date on, on, that, um, on that photo on, on Google. There's something really nice about painting these complete strangers off the Internet, too. Um, and like I said, it, it wasn't totally out of whim. Like, I wanted to paint myself. We... I grabbed a, a um, I grabbed a broom and I did some of my stretching. I looked ridiculous for uh, those photos, but it just it just didn't feel right. So I was like, oh no, let me let me try to find some uh, other angle to this. So I um, I sought something that that probably felt as ridiculous as me as I felt with that broom <laughs> on top of my head, and this is just you know the humanity's effort. I think the, uh, the the guy that invented this vibrating belt thing was like a Swedish guy. Um, but it's just humanity's effort to always try to conform to something. You know, if you're fat, just wrap a belt around your waist and and let a motor just vibrate. Let that, you know, <laughs> let that belt vibrate through a motor. So it's it's ridiculous. It's It's stupid. But that's, you know, that's us human beings. So... I think the broom, uh, or I felt as, as dumb with the broom as this, although I think the broom worked, if I have to be super honest. I think the broom was working. And I only did it for like a couple of minutes. So it was nice. It hurt like hell, though. I have to say that. Would you mind sharing what platform you guys use for the Our Painted Lives website? Oh, Squarespace. Yeah, Squarespace. Yeah. It's super easy. Um, it already has like a built-in storefront. You don't have to do anything. You, j you have to link it to your uh, PayPal account, and that, that took a little bit of, um, that takes a little bit of effort. Uh, you have to link your bank account also to the, that. No, you have to link, no, I, I don't know if you have to link your bank account. I think it's also PayPal. That's already linked through, yeah. through PayPal. So, yeah, yeah, if, if, you, if you can have PayPal and, and you can get, you, um, your bank account sorted in the sense that you can have it linked directly to it. Um, and then you can link that to, um, to Squarespace, then you're totally fine. Do you dip your brushes in any kind of solvent while no. you paint? Like no. when you switch colors? No, no, no. That's why I have these paper towels and I go through quite a bit of them. Not a ton, but quite a bit. Try to meet, I try not to be super wasteful. And that's why my hands get super dirty, also, uh, because I don't I don't waste uh, tons of them. But um, but yeah, I just I just wipe them with my brush. But this works for me because I'm a very messy painter, and I love grays, you know. And I kind of enjoy that. Um, I enjoy that that kind of um, um, you know dirty quality that paint starts to get when you don't clean your brushes. So. 
this again, this is like a me thing. This doesn't have to be for everyone. I, I totally respect people if they go like, no, 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 that's just way too much of a messy way to paint. Um, I get it, I get it. Doesn't Again, it doesn't have to work for anyone. I'm struggling a lot with uh, my proportions. Um, I've been trying to hide that while I've been working, but uh, it's really annoying me because I don't, I, I want this shape here, but maybe, you know what it is? I know that I have to make him smaller. I know it. You know, deep down, I, I know that he has to be smaller, and I'm refusing. <laughs> I am refusing to make him smaller because I like these shapes and this proportion of the paper. So I'm trying to make, you know, to make amends with that and, and to see if there, is, if there is a way in which I could balance everything out, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to. So let's see. I'm, I'm going to start putting some drawing marks just to see if maybe we can save some of this, but probably not. Are there anyone outside of your family you consider your muse? Um, no, but I don't, I don't know if... I mean, the easy answer would be to say Danny, but it, it, I don't know. I, I just don't... And I'm not saying that she's not my muse. It's just that she's no, she's something... <laughs> she's bigger than that. She's, she's the person that I love. So, you know, that to me is probably bigger and more relevant than just being a muse. Uh, I don't... I don't know if I, I actually, you know, come to think of it, I don't know if I like that word. I really don't. Um, there's a very kind of macho-y thing to having a muse. Even like saying muse, it, you're, I'm, if I say muse, I bet you like 99 out of 100 people are picturing uh, like a female. It, it's, it's weird. So, no, I don't know. I just... Um, you know, it's more interesting to me. What's most interesting to me is that I have a relationship that I value with someone, uh, you know, in this case, obviously, Danny, and that through painting, I can just think about her and our relationship or, or you know, I don't know, things that give our relationship kind of character. It's just a, a nice a nice moment with, it, it's a moment that I, I can have with our relationship. I guess that that's what I'm trying to say. And I feel that that's way more important than just saying, oh, she's so beautiful and she inspires me so much that I'm going to make, you know, my, my work is going to revolve around her. Um, no, nothing like that, to be honest. That's, uh, that's not. That I'm not going to say that I, I, I've, not to say then that I haven't had um, connections with particular people or models in the past like for example with models oh my god I've had um, models and particularly when I was uh, studying I remember there was this model this one this one model and it had nothing to do with the person being beautiful or nothing it, it, it's totally not physical I just felt that I could paint her I just felt that I could you know I, I got her like I understood her essence I know that sounds super hyperbolic but I I, you know, that's that's the way I felt, and um, and that was super exciting. I remember that. Her, I still, I even remember her name. She was Moira, Moira, and um, and it was really cool because every time I painted her, it came out great. Like, it, I had a good painting. I had a really good painting. Um, it, it was amazing. It was really amazing. And yeah, that happens. That happens. But. I feel with with Danny, I'm you know I I always feel like I get Danny. I don't get her um, like her cuter, softer side. Like Danny is far more beautiful than I've ever been able to paint her, and um, it it probably speaks. I mean about many things about my own you know um, inability to to just paint her as as beautiful as she is. So that speaks about my my um, shortcomings uh, but but I always I'm always excited to see what I see in her you know if I get the chance to to paint her again that's always super super nice um, it's always super exciting so I always feel like I, I do a good job and I and at the same time I do a bad job when I'm painting her like I do a good job because I can sense that Danny's there and I do a bad job because I, I always tell myself oh you know that she's looks way better than this <laughs> like she's way more beautiful than this so yeah so it's a weird it's kind of like a weird thing 
No, but I think it's super cool that you can like feel free to mm, like push some things when you're painting me. Like right. Like the eyes, for yeah, example, yeah. of that painting. I'm always like, if I had one eye like that open a little bit more than the other. And yeah. I think that's super, super cool. Yeah, that's it. Like, for example, one of the first paintings that I painted of Danny. I was, was sneezing. <laughs> yeah, it was, was I caught her midway. So one of her eyes just, just closed um, quicker than the other. And it's one of those photos that anyone would go, oh, my God, that's terrible. And... I saw it and I was like, no, this is one. This is the one. <laughs> this is the one that we're painting, and I loved it. And I think that's one of the first paintings I have of Danny, and it's for sure one of my favorite paintings of her. And the coolest thing is, like, the the greatest thing about having artists for partners is that Danny has never cared, never ever cared. Like, she she'll she'll never even like tell me, oh, let me see. I, like, I complain more about photographs people take of me. Then, for example, Danny complains about photographs that I'm eventually going to use to paint her. Um, so I'm far more uh, insecure about myself than she is. So no, I think so. I, no. I think you're. I think you're amazing. Like you, you never care. Like no. you're like okay, good, paint that. Yeah, but because I think I am comfortable with you painting that picture. It's not like I love the picture that you're picking. Sometimes it's like the worst picture you took me. <laughs> that's the one you want. But <laughs> I'm comfortable with you painting it. It's not that I don't have insecurities, but but yeah. That's that's um. But and and in a way, it's I also feel that if she is kind of um, if she is putting that trust in me, like I have to paint the crap out of that painting, you know, or or whatever I'm doing. It, it can be like a tiny, small painting. It doesn't matter. But if she if she is lending lending me kind of that that sense of, of insecurity, it's like, hey, I actually didn't like that image, but I trust you to make something cool. Like that means that I have to work really hard to try and make something cool. And I like, kind of like that. That's like added pressure, but it's like real life pre like pressure. It's also being um, being aware that. You, you're not just using a human being as your subject matter and then you don't care. Like, you always care. You always have to care, so. Hi, Nicolas. Hi, Dani. Do you guys ever consider making plein air week? Yeah. Uh, we'll be super honest, and let me um, start s to say this by <laughs> first preceding it by saying we love our country. Yeah. You know, this is the most amazing place that we can be but you know we this you know we live in a city where oof, if you walk down the street with your cell phone out like there's a very high probability that somebody will mug you and they will you know take your phone and this is just like a phone so trust me like even if i, I would i would love to believe that we could just walk down our city and and stop anywhere we want and just set up our paintings and you know our easels and set up our camera and start to record and feel like you know the city belongs to us and we are citizens of the city and we love the city we pay taxes here we subsidize things in this city like we we do what you do what the city asks you to do and uh but the truth is, you know, it's not safe. So our camera would probably be gone, you know, in a couple of days. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm not being pessimistic about it. And I'm not saying, oh, Bogota is, you know, terrible city. No, we love Bogota. We love it. We absolutely adore our city. Uh, but we also are aware of what it means to live here. So, yeah. So I, I don't want this to be a conversation about uh, the insecurity here in Bogota because it's not meant to, to be that conversation. It's just that there are things, like when you live here, there are things that you know that you can do and there are things that you know that you shouldn't do. So yeah, I promise you that if we set up our, our, <laughs> our photo, our camera, our, our nice camera that we worked hard to get, um, yeah, you know, maybe we do a couple of videos, but 
you know, if we're trying to do a week, it's going to eventually get stolen. So that is the truth. Tips for finding your style. I always feel like I go through phases and never improve because I keep switching mediums and styles. But look at us, you know, look at w what our painted lives has been. It's just a, an ongoing exercise and there's the paintings can feel so, so different all the time that I don't know. I know it sounds very Zen-ish, but I always tell people, you're gonna find it when you're not looking for it. Yeah, like it can't be your objective to find a style. You know what's m way more important than finding a style? Understanding what you want to say and understanding the reasons of uh, why you want to say something. And if you understand your intent, um, you know, which is what's gonna drive the images that you do, uh, and if you have a good enough relationship with your tools, that's also very important. Like you, you can't um, express through paint if you don't have a relationship with paint. That is just a very simple thing. Um, but if you have those two things, if you have that kind of nice, beautiful marriage where you're, you are in a relationship with your tools and you, you recognize what you're trying to say, then you're gonna find a way to say it through paint. And the way you say it through paint is what eventually you're going to understand as your own style. But there are no easy ways to do that. So sorry if my answer was not as sexy as this belt, this vibrating belt machine, which is what we many times want, that <laughs> answers are kind of simple and, and there's a quick pill to, that we can take to find our own style. But yeah, it's a little more a little more complex than that and it like anything in life it just takes more time it just takes a longer time to find that how's the how's audio when Danny s is uh, speaking like can you guys tell that it's better than the one from yesterday or is it the same um. Any tips to share with us about life? Life? <laughs> oh, just be happy and decent. Just be a decent human being. One of the hardest things to do, but just be decent. And, dude, I've made plenty of mistakes. Like, ask Danny. She's super aware of my mistakes. I, I haven't led a perfect life, but um, I, I don't think anyone has. I don't think any. There's, there's nobody that's perfect. Nobody. We all have our... our you know, share of dumb things that we've done or, or things that we, we hope we could have done better. Um, but there, you know, that, that you can try to work to try and change. But, um, but if you have a, like a legitimate, you know, honest willingness to, to learn from your mistakes and to try to be a little bit better, to try to be, again, like a, just a decent human being, that is, that is more, more important than painting. I mean, painting, who cares? It's, you know, if you do a nice painting, that's fine. But being a decent human being, that's, that's way more important. So, yeah, just be decent, kind, compassionate. I think we all know, like deep down, we all know what it means to be decent. That, that's, it shouldn't, that shouldn't be a matter of, of having, like, arguments. Oh, wait. They're saying my voice sounds yeah. no not my voice sounds good no but my audio sounds good oh nice but okay yours sometimes goes in and out so i am trying to lower your volume oh maybe if you let us know if that helps i just see so we look at and it's como se dice eso. yeah but it, that shouldn't be happening maybe that's when there's a gate sometimes that it um that I mean, I don't know much about audio, but I know that sometimes it, it'll block the audio if there's a gate to it, and maybe if I'm speaking a little too loud, um, it'll do that, and that would make sense because I usually get overly excited about anything. So, um, but I, I would know why it would do that, or maybe it's like an internet oh thing. Oh, no, they're saying it's good now. Okay. So, yeah, I think that helped. Or maybe if we're talking at the same time, sometimes that happens, that we'll cut each other, uh, each other off. No, no, they're saying, no, it's okay. Okay, okay. 
Um, <laughs> this question is for Danny. Which season right. of SpongeBob? <laughs> which season of SpongeBob do you love more? Oh yeah, that's all her. That's all. That's yeah. I, I would could step out. <laughs> I would say maybe mm, two season two or three. Yeah, I I know by by heart all the epi episodes. So yeah, maybe two or three, and one also. But yeah, but I love them all. <laughs> She's more of the old school. Um, SpongeBob, I feel. Um, have you ever considered to paint some palace cat? They're beautiful, What? perfect models. I don't know. Um, oh, I don't know much about a palace cat. Yeah, I'm gonna Google it. Yeah, let me see. Muestrame. Yeah, I don't know much about Ooh. cats because I don't. Um, I've never had a cat in my life. I think it's the first time I ever. See one. Oh, that's like a lynx. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's like a that's like a wild cat. I I would run the other way. Mira. Yeah, that thing can beat me for <laughs> sure. Yeah, I always look at animals and I always think, especially with like small animals or with like animals that are kind of lanky, and I always try to. Oh my God! Yeah, look at that. No, no, I run the other way. I don't care if that's the size of a mouse. I would run the other no, way. Oh, but they're beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. But it looks like it could just beat the crap out of you, like scratch the hell out of you. But I was saying, I always, when I look at animals, I always tell myself, could I beat that animal? Like if it was a, like a life or death situation. These are the sort of conversations that Danny doesn't, doesn't uh, like me thinking about. But if it was like a life or death, like, you know, it's you or this animal. You're like the last two beings on earth and you just found, you know, You, you, you just you just found yourself you know right across them and and um and and it's a battle to the death like could i take them like with my hands you know what if it was a swan like would i be able to beat like a swan you know if my life depended on it if you just go all out if your life depended on it it was like you've been dying to get some food in you and you suddenly see a swan again This is like apocalypse, like zombie apocalypse. It's nobody. You haven't seen anyone for like months. And suddenly you see the swan. Like, can you take a wild swan? I don't know. I don't know. Like a goose. Like a baby giraffe. I think a baby giraffe would kick my ass. They're saying, what about a life or death situation with a tiny kitten or puppy? Oh my God. Yeah, I would probably die of hunger. Yeah. Too. Yeah, if you put, yeah, any puppy. Any, like, pup. Oh, my God, that would be painful. Yeah, I just don't have it in me. I'm not a hunter. I'm not. So, oof, that would be tough. <laughs> They're telling us, oh, my gosh, my kids debate the same exact thing. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, I, let me tell you something. I think deep down inside, I'm like a... 12 year old no not even i'm probably like a nine year old nine year old i would say nine yeah yeah and it's funny because sometimes we have conversations like two hour conversations about these sort of topics like yeah yeah and i wouldn't blame the pandemic i think that <laughs> it, it, this is just us you know yeah. and we're invested like we're, we'll get into <laughs> we will fact check each other you know we'll we'll go like let me google that because i think you said something stupid <laughs> and uh yeah we'll, we'll go back and forth they're saying i'm vegan but if i haven't but if i have in a survival situation i eat the poor animal <laughs> oh the puppy oof that's a tough one i don't think i could kill that's the puppy no a Never. puppy no. no whimpering oh my god God, no. Can I tell a story? Can I tell you guys a story? <laughs> This is like a true story. It's like one of the most amazing stories that, um, that I've ever lived through. I, I'm, I'm actually I like that's way overhyping it. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, so lower your expectations. I'm sorry. I got a little too excited about this. But my brother in my brother's room, which eventually became my room. So we're talking about my mother's house where we grew up in. Um, that was a room that they did after the house was built so years after the house was built so it's actually built on 
kind of like a, a spot that you wouldn't really, you know, imagine that there would be a room in. So his window would look into, you know, directly into like like it was attached almost to, you know, somebody else's house, like a terrace in somebody else's house. I know this is sounding weird, but um, but right next to his window, my brother had a como se dice canal, mi amor, a gutter, a gutter. So they had a gutter and the tube going down the gutter. But that gutter was actually in between two walls, like the wall from the house that was in front of ours and our wall. So this was like a, like a 12, not even, like a, like a 10 to 12 inch space between these two uh, houses, like 30 centimeters, no, like 25 centimeters at most. I can't even paint. I'm getting super excited. So my brother, my brother who's a biologist, so, and he is a marine biologist also, so he loves scuba diving. Um, so my brother goes like, oh, my God, these kittens or these cats in the, um, in the ceiling, in the rooftops, they, can't, they, they won't let me sleep. I heard them all night. And he's like, ah, oh, what the hell? Uh, what the hell is it with these cats? And he starts listening you know, he starts um, listening in on, on the cat, and he's like, but that's not like a cat. That sounds like a kitten. So he, he goes out to his window. He starts looking for the kitten. He's like, Where's, where the hell is this kitten? So the kitten had fallen into the gutter going down into this tube, the gutter going down between these two walls. And this was probably like, I don't know, three meters. So um, tres metros, nine feet, ten feet. 10 feet down, and when he noticed that that's what happened, my brother was like, okay, we got to save this kitten, and he started lowering like a line, like a fishing line with food in it, so that the kitten, you know, hoping that the kitten would grab the food, and even if it was like him just, you know, getting attached to the hook, I, I don't even know if he had a hook or if it was just like a loop, and he, he was trying to grab it, but he couldn't do anything, he couldn't do anything. A whole day went by, and he was like, you know, this is terrible. I can't save this kitten. I don't know how to save this kitten. Like, there's no way I can get a rope down or I can get a line down to just hook him and pick him up and then take him out. There's, it's impossible. It's too far down. It's too small of a tube. Are you guys invested? Like, this is a super cool story. So, because I, I like I told you, I, I can't tell this story without, you know, while I'm painting. I just can't do it. Um so I remember just my brother being completely distraught. He was destroyed. He was like, I can't save him. I can't. And, I, and my brother loves animals. He absolutely adores animals. I, I have to say that he, he is a pure defender of animals. He, he adores them. So my brother, he is, again, he's destroyed. He has no other choice. He sees no other choice. He's, just tr he's tried everything, every single thing that you can imagine for hours and hours and hours. And he goes, you know what? I can't let him suffer. So... He has a harpoon because he scuba dives. He has a harpoon. And he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to shoot it. I'm going to shoot it down, and I know that if I hit it, you know, I'll kill the poor kitten, and I'll be able to get him out, and, you know, I'll end his suffering because this is terrible. Like, this is just killing me. He grabs the harpoon, and he shoots it. And he goes like, Tuk! and he hears it hitting the kitten. And he's like, oh, my God, it's over. You know, this is horrible. He feels horrible. And suddenly, the kitten starts meowing, like, meow, meow. He's like, what the hell? What is going on? Because, you know, he thought, oh, that killed him for sure, like, immediately. And he starts meowing, and he's like, what is going on? So he starts pulling the harpoon in, and the harpoon, and again, this, this tube, this thing, it, this tube had a diameter that was, I don't know, how big is that? like four inches in diameter, maybe. And he starts pulling this thing out. The, the harpoon went across his ear, across his ear, like the softest tissue of his ear, and didn't even harm his body. And he was pulling the kitten up from his ear. So the kitten was alive. He was perfect. He was like, he saved it. You know, of course, yeah, he tried to kill it, but to end his suffering... But it was a damn miracle. Like it went to the only, only spot in his body that it could have ever gone through. And he pulled him out. 
amazing absolutely amazing and the kitten you know um they took him to the well my dad was a vet but my dad you know the first time they told they um he wasn't like a uh, like a vet like a surgeon vet and uh, my dad always tells the story that the first uh time that he was asked to try and help a kitten he tried to operate on that kitten and he, and the kitten died when the uh couple that was giving thanks to him for saving the kitten um, uh, threw a dinner party for him. The no. kitten died at the middle of a di no. at the dinner party. So my father was like, "I'm never. I'm not a surgeon. I'm never going to do this again." But my father saw the kitten, and they were like, "Yeah, just take him to the vet." And they just um, put some um, sutures in in the ear, and he was good to go. He was perfect, perfect. One of the nine lives, but it was incredible. So that's my story. I think it's a good story, by the way. You guys can tell me if it was a good story, but uh, I yeah. think it's an amazing story. They're saying great story. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay, let me get back to painting. <laughs> Painting's not going to go well today. I can see that. Um, okay, when they talk about the debate of their kids' topics, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're saying the big one in our house, a werebear or a werecow, not werewolf. Oh, like, like to fight against one? Or oh, a cow is too big, though. I mean, a, a bear is crazy. I mean, a, you don't need you don't a, a bear doesn't have to be a were bear to just kill you. Yeah. So, but a cow? Oh, that would be amazing. A were cow? I mean, a, a, an eighteen wheeler can slam into a cow, and the eighteen wheeler is going to be totaled. A cow can take you know they can take a beating. So. I don't know. They'd probably be... I would want the two of them to go at each other, though. That would be interesting. Werebear versus werecow. <laughs> that's, that's where uh, I, would pay, I, w I would pay for that pay-per-view. Um. It's Friday. I know. It's devolving <laughs> into everything except painting. But um, that's fine. Yeah, and... That if they are fighting against each other, which one would you think would win? Oh my God! I think the cow. You know, yeah, you know how I think Homer. The bear. But you know how Homer um, fought against Mike Tyson. Do you remember that Simpsons episode? Yeah. And he could just take a punch. Like I think the bear, like the cow, is just trying to um, to uh, to tire the uh, bear out. Bear is just going nuts. It's just going nuts at the cow. The cow is like, oh, that hurts, but I could take it. I could do this all day. That's what the cow says. No, but if he, like, if the bear scratches or bites yeah. the cow, like, yeah, but bye bye cow. Cows scratch themselves with, like, wire, like, barbed wires. Yeah, but no. They use barbed wires to scratch. When they have, like, an itch, they throw themselves against the barbed wire fence to scratch themselves. No, That's how much that hide can take. But have you seen a scratch of a bear? I know, but it's a it's cow. It's like totally different. My money's on the cow. Money's on the cow. Like no. I, I, would, I would make a bet on the cow, and I think I would win big. No, I'm team bear. Yeah. yeah no. no, no, no. Team cow for a hundred, a hundred. You know, people don't expect it, but they would be like, if the cow wins, people would be like, yeah, yeah, well, you should have seen that. We should have seen that coming. <laughs> Okay, I need to I need to get my drawing straight. <laughs> I'm doing like a it's looking like a bacon without me thinking without me trying to make it look like a bacon painting. So. Oh, but someone said that some time ago. They yeah. were saying at this stage the painting seems a little bacon. Yeah, bacon-ish, but yeah. um, which I'm totally fine with, but I want to see and and a lot of my paintings I mean, I would hope that that my my fondness for him and my respect for him shows in, in a bunch of my more expressive paintings. But um, yeah, the things I don't know what I wanted to do with this one. So maybe if it if it just looks that's why I thought if we make it um, like like a carnival carnival esque, then you know that that's kind of like an easy way to go for this painting. But I I thought that that could be kind of nice. Probably the red and the dark and the big massive white that helps. That helps it feel like a like a Francis Bacon, but um, yeah. So they're divided between yeah bear I'm or cow team. But so I'm, I'm trying. I think I sold the uh, cows um, possibilities well. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, just that you never expect it. You don't expect the cow to be that powerful. Mm. No, I'm still team bear. But um, any funny art stories? Oh, oof. I don't know. I'll come up. I'll I'll remember. Not I'll come up with something, but I'll, I'll remember something. Give me give me a little bit. And I'll remember. What is your thought process like when you go from color to color? Do you follow some scheme or strategy? Um, right now I don't. Right now it's it's very messy, but I like the fact that it's messy because I'm trying to find my way. I don't have. There's not a lot of. Um, th- there's not a lot of, you know, color. Um, like variables happening in the painting. So I'm just, honestly, I'm feeling this painting out probably more so than I did the other ones during this week. But I'm totally fine with that. I'm, I'm super comfortable with, with doing that. I actually really like working this way. I think that when I, when I don't know what the painting is gonna look like, it feels super exciting, so. Does oil have a similar thing as gouache? that new layers lift up the paint underneath? Um, if you are forceful enough with your brush, you're going ki- you're gonna to pick up paint. If you are using medium and you're using an excess of medium when you shouldn't be doing that, the solvent in your medium or the medium itself, the oil itself, can pick up uh, paint from underneath. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of oil painting is, is kind of like the same as... Um, as gouache painting in the sense that you have to feel your surface out. You, you really have to understand when you can push something, like how far you can push the uh, your paint, and when you have to start to be very, very careful about the way you lay down paint. Mm. I don't see any new questions. No, right they, now. they got, um, <laughs> they're still struggling with the, um, with the wear, wear cow. What's awesome about the wear cow? I mean, at least the the bear, he's a he's an omnivore. <laughs> You're still on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bear the bear has this natural inclination to just kill, you know, whatever it feels like it could eat. But a cow, if a cow is killing you, it's because she's gone. Like, like she is gone. Like she's messed up. Because I'm not even thinking of a bull. I'm thinking of a cow. Um, because cows just need grass. They, you know, they're not omnivores. They, they just eat grass. So, um, so if that cow has this willingness to kill, oh my God, that cow has been through hell. You know, there is like a, you know, a deep necessity to kill. So, you know, that the bear knows that feeling, but if the cow is, is now suddenly granted this ability to do that, it's because she she's messed up. She is messed up. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. The cow. They're I'll saying double my money on the cow. They're saying, okay, but have you ever seen a cow attack anything? You would really need to make it mad. Well, yeah. it's a were cow now. I mean, she's it's like a zombie cow. She's out of her mind. There's no mind. So. Any any self imp- self imposed restrictions are now gone. You know, floodgates open. She is free to kill. Um, they're asking, what's your favorite food? Oh, Danny will answer that. Although I'm trying pizza. to... Yeah. Pepperoni pizza. Yeah, I'm trying to... With extra cheese <laughs> and extra pepperoni. Yeah, like the worst of pepperoni pizza. That's like what I love the most. <sighs> but we're trying to eat better. I mean, if you look at us, we're not, you know, it's not as if we're like horribly unhealthy um but i guess pandemic hit us you know like everyone else um and uh we're trying to eat a little bit healthier now so so yeah but yeah even even if i'm trying to if i'm convincing myself that you know i i can't eat pizza that much and i didn't eat i don't it's not like i eat pizza every week or you know so it's not that bad 
but uh, but I just love it way too much. I I just really really like it. And um, yeah, but we should come clean because at some point of the quarantine we I were. Mean, yeah, but not every day. No, no, every day. But we were like switching between pizza and hamburger. No, but you're making yeah. it sound way more extreme than what it was. It's, it wasn't as terrible. But we ordered takeout like at that time. Okay, you're making it sound worse. <laughs> like you, you're not helping us right now. <laughs> okay, but we were ordering about. Okay, like you went with <laughs> you. You are <laughs> like still three going. times a week, and that's terrible. No, but not pizza three times a week. That we n we've never done that in five in almost six years. We've never done that. That's craziness. I mean, I wouldn't mind doing it, but we've never d we've we've yet to explore that place. So, is it a human a day that turns into a cow with a full moon? The were cow. Oh, what turns her? What turns her into a, a were cow? I don't know. Yeah, it would. Would they be? Would they be human? Would they be? Would they be part of? ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Cómo se llama crepúsculo? La película. Ay, eh, Obvio nunca me la he visto, entonces no sé. What's the movie called? The the, um, the, the dude that's going to do uh, Batman. Uh, Twilight. Twilight. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think if you pitch that character to to Twilight, they'd be like, "Okay, yeah, here's the uh, here's the vampire, here's the wolf, here's the cow." <laughs> okay, so here's a twist. To the question. Okay. So he looks like Elvis now. Now he did like a <laughs> like a fat um, uh, Vegas Elvis. <laughs> and it's he totally looks fine. like singing, no? I know. I, I, I but mean, that's I, cool. I want to do something weird with the uh, head up here. Um. Or he just won something. He's just like he won the uh, will to live. <laughs> I don't know. He won a pizza. <laughs> um, so what's the twist? What's uh? Yeah. So they're saying, the boys say, if they had it. They had a choice to turn into a werebear or a werecow. What would you choose? You, I think, the werecow. Oh, hell yeah. I can't, I mean, I can't back the werecow, the winner, by the way, if I, if I don't want to, um, to turn myself into a werecow. I'm 100% I'm in. But I don't know, because I think the werebear would win but Wear i would bear. like to be that doesn't even sound that <laughs> sounds like a care bear yeah. that doesn't even sound menacing but i would that like to become a wear cow better. no oh do you remember that movie that had the the zombie bear no a terrible movie <laughs> I, I it's a spoiler sort of so uh, who cares it's a terrible movie the yeah. one with sandra bullock uh, or no not no, sandra bullock not the one with natalie portman oh, terrible yeah oh my god that movie was horrible And there was a werebear. Wasn't it a werebear? Like a zombie bear? Oh, yeah. I think so. That they found that bear at the end. And it wasn't that scary. I mean, a bear is already scary. You don't need, to, you don't need for it to be a werebear. But just imagine a cow. Imagine, like, hearing some mooing, you know, in the pasture. Yeah, annihilation. Like, annihilation, terrible. We, th we thought it was terrible. Um, but imagine hearing that. And you go like, oh, it's just a cow. And then you, you get really close up and you're just like, oh, my God, it's a fucked up cow. <laughs> that will, If it's a bear, you would be like, oh, my God, that bear has been through hell. Like you, you could start trying to justify it like, oh, that bear probably got into a fight with another bear. And it's just like all beat up. But if it's a cow, oh, my God, I promise you just make up. You just book it. You just run for the hills. Yeah, so I'm trying to Google the bear of Annihilation to put a picture. Yeah, yeah. it was terrible. Look at this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nasty, but no. I mean, it's pretty nasty, but it's a bear. It's like a, have you seen bears coming out of hibernation? I mean, they look messed up. They look really messed up. That was almost that bear. Oye, ¿me haces un fa? ¿Le dices a Samu que ya, ya vienen por ellos? Espera, te hago una pregunta. Sí, así que tengo que 
I am very unsure about what to do with the painting today. <laughs> but I'll, I'm gonna keep going. I'll, I'll fight it out. I'll battle it out. I have the uh, heart of a uh, were cow, so. I have to be true to my, uh, my nature. Yeah, they're saying a wear care bear. Yeah, it's yeah like right. <laughs> Terrible name. <laughs> Terrible. You can't be scared of that. What about a duel between wear Rembrandt and wear oh. Sargent? <laughs> oh, who's nastier? Probably Rembrandt is nastier, I would say. He's, he's like scruffier, I would feel. <laughs> you know, he would, he would fight dirty. Uh, Sergeant would be far too classy for like a, like a fight to the death. He would be like a duel to the death. You know, he would follow the rules. He would be super classy. He would take like all the steps. And as soon as he, would, he was going to turn back, Rembrandt had already, you know, turned back. He's already gone. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're saying this is a true Friday conversation. Yeah, don't <laughs> trust the Dutch. Never trust the Dutch. What? <laughs> Nothing. Um, oh wait. Would you ever consider doing a tour of your filming setup? It would be a fun. It would be fun seeing a behind-the-scenes look. Yeah. This project has been a huge inspiration, and I love the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For we, I think we've shown our setup. You, yeah. We've, like we've shown it a couple of times. I feel. In photos, yeah. Yeah, right, and we, we kind of make fun of it because it's super not really a setup. I mean, it's it's a very, very ghetto-y, no, very... No, but it's a, it's it's a setup. No, it's spit and dreams. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, held up by, it's held up by a desire, by a poem and a desire. <laughs> no, it's, um, yeah, it's not professional looking. Like, many times I've, I've seen Brokos, Prokopenko set up and he's super nice. He's he's written to me to uh, give me pointers as to what I should do with cameras and and uh, light sources and and all that kind of cool stuff. Um, but his setup is like super expensive though. Like he 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 really invested in that setup. So um, I could have invested in that setup, but I probably bought like statues, comic book statues, and <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, so my um, my setup is, uh, you know, if we did like a studio uh, tour, have you seen the? Creo que ya está para que bajen. Sí, para que para que bajen. It's just that uh, my kids they they um, they're picking up my kids, so uh, let me do this like a second. Okay, um, so I, I don't know if you guys saw it. Ha, did you guys see the, the, I don't know if you guys are Kim Jong-gi fans, but did you see his uh, studio, when he showed his studio? Um, when he showed like the Super Annie studio, when he did like a little studio tour? <laughs> maybe, maybe. I'm sorry, they, they're saying Proko may have a cool setup, but does he have any work cows? I don't think so. No, <laughs> those conversations never, yeah, <laughs> never take place. <laughs> There's serious talk over there. Um, He's a nice guy. Um, how do you resist grabbing the rigging, rigging brush and just drawing in the folds? Oh, but I, I, I've been wanting to do that, but the bigger shapes have to be there. Uh, what I think I'm missing is, is the going around of this. It's, it's really kind of bugging me. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Danny's going to show you guys a, a photo of what it looks like. Yeah, it Again, spit and dreams. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> But it would take me like five minutes because I have to send it to my email. So 
Pues, no, like a minute. No, porque me toca... I have to put it on OBS. Oh, yeah, but just send it and open it in, in the uh, computer. O oh, la, la mandas a mi correo y abre, ábrelo desde mi correo. Do you exercise now? <sighs> How to answer that? No, we don't. No, okay, no. Danny answered yeah. super quickly. I was going to take more time with that answer. <laughs> So it, you know, maybe there was room for like doubt, but no, we don't. And, and we used to exercise a little bit more. Yeah. So there was a time that we exercised a lot. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. We, we tried uh, some time ago to complete uh, jump jumping. Rope. Jump rope. Yeah. yeah. So we tried that and Danny almost puked. I'm going to throw her in the bus. No, I, I did. Yep. Why did you say that? But yeah, yeah. Because I you answered too quickly about <laughs> us not exercising at all. So yeah, first session of jump rope, Danny almost puked. Because I wasn't used to. Jumping rope, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just trying to um, make it sound not better. Not throw up. But <laughs> we were jumping for about like 30 minutes without stopping. So that was a lot for me. <laughs> Yeah. It was like 10. No. Yeah. No. It was like 10. No. Like 12. No. 30 minutes. <laughs> you started this. You said that we don't do anything. So. <laughs> yeah, but I was throwing both of us under the bus. I know both of us. <laughs> I know. They're saying, Danny, why? Haha. <laughs> I, ha I hate to jump rope too. No, I love it. But I wasn't like when we did that. I hadn't been exercising for about, like, I don't know, five months, four mm -hmm. months. So, so yeah, I don't know. My body couldn't um, take all the jumping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we're painting this reference right now, with mm -hmm. you should we share it somewhere i'm enjoying a lot this new space yes and I oh was yeah sorry i was saying that they could use the hashtag our painted lives if oh, they please. want to upload awesome. it on instagram so yes we can check the paintings or drawings or whatever at night yeah we 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 don't i mean we do check that that hashtag i, I think that sometimes if we don't if it seems like we don't pay attention to it that much is, is because we we've always felt that um that uh, i don't know sometimes it feels kind of weird if if you're trying to tell people hey you know this is what we're doing and for you to participate you need to be painting and and many times we feel like well you don't you don't need to to be part of of you know what we're doing you just need to feel like you know we're we're just there having conversation while you paint and for many people, um, it's been like I do my own paintings while I listen to you guys, and and that's super cool. Also, um, so yeah. So if if we don't check it as much, it's, it's it's almost like us saying, hey, you don't really have to do this. Like, we super appreciate it if you if you do want to work uh, alongside us, but but you don't, you know, we we don't want to pressure people into thinking that they have to. But if you do it, that's awesome, and many times we we. We check that hashtag and, and it's it's so fun to see what people end up doing so yeah or you can uh, tag us if you want yeah yeah but so. maybe next year I, I can be a little more organized with that and and um, even if we're doing I mean even if the active place where we are having like an exchange is through here through through the live videos that can also have um, kind of like a space in Instagram and I could just post um, kind of like repost in my Instagram some of the things that people are doing just be a little more you know that's on me and I just have to be a little more organized with that um, hashtag so <laughs> they're saying use the hashtag wear cow oh hell yeah <laughs> if you guys do a kick-ass wear cow and you post it I will post that tomorrow <laughs> on my Instagram like that's that is I'm I'm a hundred percent for real yeah, so they're saying us, I'm going to start dark. 
have you seen Black Mirror? It changed my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a. Tú, tú te viste todo también? No, Yo te... no, I just, I watched like some episodes, like four maybe, but but I didn't saw all the, all yeah, the I, series. So. I've watched it all. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a really big fan. Um. Yeah, they're saying that where cow should be the new domain name. Oh my God! <laughs> don't even don't. Oh, you're so terrible. Yeah, and and they made a little twist. Uh huh. And it's not where cow, but we are a cow, like uh, we. We're yeah, we are. We are a cow. cow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you have apostrophes for uh, domain names? I don't know if you can. Yeah, they say wear cow for the new domain, but they are still team wear bear. So, oh, stop it! <gasps> Those people blocked. <laughs> no. Thank you. Goodbye. I wish. better shape now I'm slowly getting there T it, it's gonna take me a, a while but uh, I'll, I'll slowly get there and by there I mean to a place where I just I don't know where I, where I feel it's still ridiculous what I'm painting but it's um, it starts to look like a painting trying to look for the questions that they did before all the where cow and where no there were no questions before that none of them matter none of them matter mm. okay so they also asked what type of light do you paint under and i think the image that i'm gonna show right right yeah gonna that, that's gonna be bit. again Think, um, think ghetto setup. Think inventiveness. Think uh, proud Colombians. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying now. Oh, Camila Ogerman says she's team broom. <laughs> nice, Camila. It did help. It helped a little bit. I mean, I was surprised, but the first um, couple of minutes that I left it, that I was kind of uh, leaning back, leaning forward, I mean, um, it hurt like hell because that, that movement, just wrapping my arm around my back and then with the other arm that's like, the, the, the left arm that's up, like, sh like um, elbow pointing up and it's pulling at that arm or, or just pulling up because I'm leaning forward. Oh my God, that is painful. That is very, very painful. They're asking if they can get on a wait list to buy a painting. So no, we don't. We're going to be super honest. We don't usually do that. We, we don't. We try to make it as fair and as, you know, fair for everyone, I guess, that, that wants to, to really um, purchase a painting. Um, we just all, people, when people ask us about the hour that we post it, we just, it's usually... When we do our regular videos, it's usually around 7 a.m. like Colombian time, 7 a.m. like 7 to 7.30 a.m. Colombian time. And that's about it. Like, that's, that's really it. And we are very lucky, I, I, I have to be honest. Like, we never expected, you know, people to buy paintings sometimes like instantly. It's, very, it's a very strange feeling. Um, but, um, but yeah, we, for the sake of being super honest and, and being fair, like we we just post the paintings and that's it. Yeah, so I'm gonna show the setup right okay. now. So Again, expectations lower them. Yeah, that's our setup. <laughs> They're gonna be like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Losing people by the second. <laughs> yeah.
It looks like a were cow went through. Yeah, no comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's the no shock, one saying yeah, anything. I know the shock has the <laughs> shock hasn't set in. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna finish for today then. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we can smell the disappointment. Um has Nick posed for Danny's pictures? Um, um have you ever painted me? Yeah. I think I did a little drawing of you once. Oh right, that yeah, you yeah, were yeah. sleeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was it was sweet. It was very sweet. Yeah. Yeah, but I I, I don't. I'm. But it's not that I don't pose for Danny's paintings. I just don't pose that no, but much. I, I do have some uh, reference photos that I want to draw or paint or whatever later, and I took some from some of our trips. Mm -hmm. that I like so maybe in the future but but yeah I think I've done like only one drawing yeah maybe. but it's just that I, I just don't like I usually don't like photos of yeah. me or, or I, I'm super insecure about that so um, do you have a favorite type of brush if so which one everyone changed the subject matter Danny like you killed killed everyone's <laughs> momentum with the photo of our setup, or maybe yeah. they don't. I don't know, but they're saying, L O L. Yeah. Um, the emoji that's laughing, and I'm amazed you're comfortable painting. Oh, wow. I never said I was comfortable. <laughs> yeah. I never said I was comfortable. I said that I I have a shoulder that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else is there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you didn't answer. Do you have a favorite type oh. of brush? If so, um, which one? Not really. I, I have tons. I have lots of brushes that I enjoy using. But I don't think I, you know, like, if I, you know, lost those brushes, I'd, I'd be fine without them. Like, I, I would probably use some other brushes, and that's that's it. Like, that's as, that's as much as I care about brushes, I feel. Like, they're, they're great. They're wonderful tools, but in, in terms of a... Of them being like generic, like, you know, a brush. But I, I would never feel a sense of attachment to a brush. Because if I, you know, if I buy it once and I love it and then I'm, I'm never going to, you know, I, I never, I can never buy it again or I can never get like another one here in Bogota. Like, what's the point of it? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So I've taught myself not to feel attached to those things. Even like paint. If if I can't have my my regular paint, well, then I can't have my paint. That's totally fine. I thought you were gonna say Silver Falcon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like a that was like joke, but um, yeah, but I favor cheaper, like my my cheaper um, flat synthetic brushes. I, I I enjoy those quite a bit. Do you prefer to stand and paint? <gasps> I used to. I used to uh, paint standing up all the time, all the time. Uh, but the setup to to record paintings it's it's so difficult. It's so so hard to find like a good setup for recording painting. That's why not many people do it. If I have to be um, super honest, it's um it's very difficult. It's very very difficult. So. We landed on what we do now, which is a angled table, and I have to be sitting down, and the camera is like above me. So um, that's the best that we, you know, maybe there are better ways, it's, but this is the way that kind of works for us. So we tried a lot at the beginning, but everything seemed either a little too cumbersome or just way too, um, way too uncomfortable you know maybe a setup is good for recording but it's terrible but you can't paint while you're you know in that setup so um so yeah we we tried quite a bit trust me but yeah this is this is the best that we could come up with any halloween paintings coming up i should but the thing is i'm gonna st i'm gonna spend halloween doing the uh liverpool workshop so I don't know if we if we're gonna have time to do that. That's a shame. Hey. Don't make me feel bad about it because I I had thought about that and I feel bad that uh, that I I'm I'm not gonna be able to. 
Hola jóvenes, ¿alguna vez? Uy, gracias por lo de joven, muy amable. <risa> ¿Alguna vez, Nicolás, has borrado, desaparecido, por ejemplo, What? la cabeza de... La neta. <risa> por ejemplo, la cabeza de este cuadro y resuelto así una pintura como última medida? Sí, muchas veces, sí. O sea, no es algo inusual que yo hago, yo creo. A mí me encanta como... Eh, desconfigurar la forma bastante hay muchas pinturas en particular como las esas pinturas de boxeo que hice eh, en esas pues hacía como que me arriesgaba muchísimo en cuanto a las la manera como podía entender forma entonces sí 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 lo he hecho con gusto además me, me fascina hacer ese tipo de cosas um, where can I see your art Danny Um, Emily, right now I'm not the best with, for example, social social media like Instagram. I don't upload that much, but I'm trying to work on it. So, if you want, you can go and check my Instagram. I would uh, type the username. But yeah, they they are like. ¿Cuántas imágenes tengo como? No sé, pues. Como cuatro. <laughs> No, pues tienes las que te sientes cómoda con las que yeah, te sientes so, cómoda. But, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get better at that. Thank you for your interest. Um, any preferences painting under natural versus artificial lighting? Oh, I don't, I don't like artificial lighting, so... I mean, if I have to do it, that's totally fine. But I just, if, if I can choose, I much rather paint during the day, you know, meaning however many hours you have of, of available daylight to paint. And I, I kind of like the fact that when, you know, there's no more light, when the sun goes down, you just say, I'm done. You know, I'm done for the day. And it just feels like a, it just feels like a really cool day. You know, it just feels like you were able to get stuff done in the day. And then you rest at night or you do whatever it is that you do at night. Uh, I, I, I like that feeling. ¿Qué libros de filosofía del arte recomiendas? Puedes responder en inglés por si les interesa a personas no hispanohablantes. Pues a mí, a mí en particular no es que me gusten los de filosofía como de arte, pero hay un libro de filosofía que es como de filosofía... Eh, uf, eh, se llama La filosofía perenne, Perennial Philosophy. Entonces, si quieres, búscalo. Ah, qué pena. Sí, sí, de, de Huxley, de Aldous Huxley. Ah, sí, sí, sí. Y, y ese libro, creo que mi... O sea, convirtió, y, y por eso es que de pronto estoy diferenciando lo que, eh, digamos, yo como profe me hubiera referido como a, a una filosofía que desemboque en las artes pero me cambió mi perspectiva desde el interés que yo tenía por, por ese tipo de filosofía que era de pronto más académico a, una, a un interés por una filosofía como más espiritual sin ser como religioso. Yo creo que el valor más grande que tiene como ese, ese estudio que hace Huxley de las filosofías, de casi todas las filosofías, es, es que le muestra a uno que puede existir una noción de espiritualidad sin que uno sea religioso, que yo, yo creo que ese es como mi caso. Entonces, ese me cambió muchísimo. Y, y puede que no sea artístico en, la, en el sentido en el que... Oh, en el que eh, sea una filosofía sensible que desemboca como, no sé, en, en, el, en la reflexión eh, de, de, de la parte como creadora... Eh, de la parte como, sí, creadora que acompaña como el, el, la práctica artística, pero, pero a mí me cambió el resto. No sé si alguien lo haya leído, pero pues uf, para mí fue importantísimo leer ese libro. 
Um, they're saying I'm drawing the workout now. <laughs> oh hell yeah, that's guaranteed. Um, <laughs> that's a guarantee uh, share from me. A hundred percent. Not kidding. Mm, they're also saying Danny could substitute y for you and do the Halloween paintings. She could. Well, but she would have to. Like, this is a two person job, to be honest. It's not super easy to do both recording and then editing and then voiceover. And it oh, is I couldn't. Very I could not do a voiceover. She plays. No, I would panic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure you could do it. Mm. Yeah, but no, and I think I'm going to, like, um, spend that time with my family, the time that Nicolás is uh, doing the workshop. So I would try to n not work <laughs> and go visit my my father, my mother, my sister. So, so yeah, but thank you. Thank you for, for your suggestion. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for making me work more. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> No, pero no más preguntas. Están. No preguntaron otra vez cómo nos conocimos en inglés, sí. pero ya la ya la había respondido. Dan, I could say that because somebody was asking uh, how we met, but I, I could tell you what our first kind of date was. Uh, we went to see, because uh, um, Danny is also a football fan, and we went to see Colombia play Chile in a Copa America at a friend's house. And it was a weirdest game. It was delayed for like hours because it was raining like it has never rained before. Um, it was very, very strange. Uh, and I was telling Danny the other day that it's so weird because we saw uh, Colombia play last night. But usually when we kind of like, or we either go out to watch and, and see Colombia play, uh, Colombia always loses, always, when we're together. <laughs> no, so that's not true. It is true. It's 100% no. true. No, 100%. No. Yeah, yeah, it pains me to say it. <laughs> it, it really pains me to say it because it, it puts me at a crossroads that's terrible like i have to choose you know one of the most incredible things in my life which is to watch my country play football or danny and it's not easy it's not an easy choice it really isn't so she is not making it easier by um by acknowledging that every time that um, that we see, that we watch Colombia. That I, I think every time that we go out or we're watching it somewhere else together, we lose. We lose. It's like it's like it's either or. Life is telling us, you know, <laughs> you guys make the sacrifice, or you know, or you just have to suffer and watch Colombia lose. <laughs> so it's a tough tough question. ¿Cuál fue el partido que yo estaba con Manu? Que ganaron hace poquito. Ah, que tú no estabas el de Chile, Colombia Chile. Sí, esa vez me dijiste que no. Sí, sí, sí. Que menos mal, ¿no? Sí, ya, yeah, yeah. no ya. Porque no estabas. Y Colombia jugó increíble. Sí. Es como lo mejor que ha jugado Colombia en no sé ocho años. Um, so, Leach is saying, I remember your first first date ha 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 yeah, yeah. no <laughs> leech leech uh we we've said this before but uh nicolas was the person that that kind of introduced us so yeah we owe him the yeah, world yeah thank you leech <laughs> he's a super uh you should you should um link nicolas's uh instagram because okay. he's super talented um he's a super talented artist <laughs> Creo que es... es Lich, sí, pero... Sí, sí, sí. Sí, sí, estoy bien. Listo. Lich, ¿ese curo es de algo de anime o de qué es eso? Hola, 
¿Quién te gusta para el Balón de Oro? Uh, uh, eh, ¿Será uf, será que se lo dan a Kanté, creo? A N'Golo Kanté Porque, porque pues el, el Chelsea ganó Pues ellos ganaron la Euro Y el Chelsea ganó la... Ah, no, la Euro no ¿Qué? ¿Quién ganó la última de Euro? No, no fue Francia Ah, la ganó Italia, Italia, fue cuando yo estaba allá No, no, no sé, pero, pero creo que porque, porque Sí, yo estaba allá, qué absurdo eh, Creo que, que se lo dan Sí, es que quién más Creo que a Cante por, por, eh, por la temporada así tan increíble Es que es un monstruo Es un monstruo Sí, no creo que a ninguno a, a, quién, a quién se lo darían de Italia a Donnarumma, pero no, no creo. O a Chiesa, pero tampoco. No, no sé. Eh, Lich dice, si sí, en el colegio me decían así por el bichito de... Te con King... ¿De Te con King Crit? Ah. Sí. <risa> yo no sabía que, que era de eso. Pues es que yo me he visto Te con King Crit, pero no... O sea... Usted me conoce, Lich. Yo creo que le paró más bolas a la animación que a la historia, entonces. Eh, Dani, Nicolás, if you want help arranging the Houston meetup, I'm happy to figure out the logistics for you. Oh, nice. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Tienes que llegar. Yeah, no, I think we could do it. I yeah. really do think we could do it. Um, Maybe we could go to a museum. Or no? Yeah, museum or bar afterwards. Or coffee. Or coffee. Yeah. yeah. Stanley's like, or coffee. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you. Um, no, we could have a beer at a place where they have uh, biscuits. <laughs> Nicolas. Beer and biscuits? Beer and biscuits. No. Oh my God, no, that sounds horrible. so good. No, I can't, no, no. I can't even paint now. I'm thinking <laughs> of biscuits. You know, guys, biscuits, like just regular buttermilk biscuits, um, I think are the most delicious things in the world. And we can't, we don't have those here in, in Colombia. So when I travel, oh my God, I like I have to, I have to find a place where we could have biscuits. And it's Texas. I'm sure there's tons of places where... I, I don't even know where the uh, better biscuits were from. I, I had some incredible ones in... Where was this? North Carolina, I think. Yeah, North Carolina. I, and I think I had some good ones in Austin also. So that's Texas uh, too. But, oh my God. Not in, I don't even need gravy. Like, just biscuits. Just a regular ass biscuit. Oh my god. <laughs> They're saying carbo load. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't I mean we just said that my my um my favorite food is like pepperoni pizza and like the bad you know the the, the type of pizza that you take a bite off and you just you just feel it going straight to your heart. Straight to your heart. Like you know, that to me is heaven. That is that that's amazing. That's incredible. They're saying, yes, biscuit sounds good. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so good. <laughs> and we and we didn't have biscuits the last no, time we were I there. No, I know. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing I miss about uh, the U.S., diners. <laughs> uh, nothing better than a diner. Like an East Coast diner. Oh, my God. You just have any food. You just ask for any sub, any burger, anything, any, you know, omelet at any any time you want. It's like three minutes it's in your table. It takes three minutes for it to be in, at the table. And it's fresh and it's warm. Uh. They're saying we could meet at the Rodko Chapel. So, yeah. Remember that they, yeah, they yeah, told yeah. us that about that? Yeah, like a before. religious experience. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Cheeseburger or empanada? Oh, they're so different, though. They're so different. Because a good una empanada, a good empanada is it's very good, but they're very yeah. different. I don't know. I don't know if they're. I would never put them in the same category, to be honest. Pero una empanada como las de que Uy, daban, las, las de, de tu colegio, sí. Uy, no, entonces empanada. <risa> no, más que hamburguesa. 100%. No, no. 100%, mi amor, esa empanada no tiene no tiene límites. No sé. Sí. Yeah, empanada. If it's a uh, empanada rellena, like the ones that they sell at my old school, which is Samu School, which was the only thing that was interesting about Um, taking him to soccer, to football practice every Saturday morning. The only redeeming thing about that was that um, this this woman that lives in a in a very poor neighborhood that's right up the street from my school. Um, she has this deal with my school that she she makes empanadas for for my school. And um, so there's always this kid running up and down, like almost like the mountain on this bike uh, uh, with the empanadas, and he takes them to the school. And they are some of the most incredible empanadas that I've ever tasted in my life. Incredible. But the thing is, you know what's the bad thing? That empanadas means one thing in Bogota. In, yeah, in Bogota or the, the, in different cities in Colombia, it would mean something different. In different countries of uh, Latin America, it also means different things. Yeah. Like Venezuela and Colombia were neighbors, and the empanadas are very different from each other. So. O la Argentina. Sí, o la chilena. Sí, sí. Uy, yo creo que... No, tú eres hamburguesa. Yeah. Sí. Yeah, Danny is burger for sure. She, she loves burgers. No, I love empanadas, but cheeseburger is my favorite food. So, yeah. Cheeseburger. I'll throw Danny under the bus. Um, <laughs> when <Again>? she was <laughs> when when she was uh, bartending, um, there were times that sometimes that I would, you know, I would pick you up. You remember sometimes, not not often, because she yeah. stopped working like at four in the morning, four yeah. thirty in the morning, and um, and she would tell me, "Oh, can we stop at McDonald's?" <laughs> and she would have like three cheeseburgers. No, but the little. No, it doesn't matter. There's three. <laughs> Like, she would have three cheeseburgers at, like, 4.30 in the morning. And she would be like, oh, this hit the spot. And I was like, oh, my God, you animal. But now I, I don't eat at McDonald's. No, we Never. don't. No. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> They're over. Yeah. Um, tiene que probar la pizza de pepperoni de Price Mart. Eh, es la mejor directo al corazón yo la he probado es súper grasosa es que delicioso. creo que yo la probé en, en Barranquilla que Barranquilla tuvo el primer Price Mart <risa> y es una locura es como la de Costco es, 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 es del, así sí, es deliciosa es súper grasosa locura, es una locura sí la deberían vender como con una una camilla al lado de una vez <risa> also a question I don't know if some people are gonna hate me but do you like go for it go eh, hawaiian pizza eso existe en estados unidos ah la hawaiana sí, sí. yeah don't don't even don't even start with like a pineapple yeah because we pizza. we had this discussion with nicolas and i think it's it's very delicious and he yeah. hates it yeah stop it <laughs> yeah yeah but i would like to know if you like it too. no 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 we don't even have to <laughs> open this up no, but i want to know the floor for argument no 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 It's, it's pointless, honestly. Eh, a ver. I'll stop painting. Did you like bartending, Danny? Um, yes. Yeah, I mm, yeah I like it, but because I'm not that into partying, so the work, I think, was a good fit for me because I was never, like, interested in being part of the party. I was, like, bartending, too. Um, but it was hard, and at the end, I I had a lot of like troubles with my sleep because I was bartending for five years. So yeah, it was hard, but but I I did a lot of good friends there, and they were like pretty 
awesome with me so yeah I like the companion of bartending but I think it's it's pretty hard also I was working uh, Friday and Saturdays and sometimes uh, Thursdays so yeah it was hard and also when I moved with Nicolas it was hard on both of us because I would get home like 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. and wake up like 12 a.m. 12 yeah. at the 12 p.m. Yeah, 12 p.m. So, yeah, it had good things and bad things, but I would say I'm happy I closed that cycle. So, yeah. Um, they're saying Hawaiian is my jam. Thank you, Rosalind. You yeah. are my team. No. <laughs> Eh, a ver. Mm. Van Sant likes Hawaiian. Van Sant doesn't <laughs> have taste. He's French. I, what? He's French. I know. I know. I, I said it. <laughs> I went to it. I went there. But he. What is a French person? You know, talking about pizza. I mean, this is not. Okay, but you're a Colombian person talking about pizza, so. I know. Which team are you on? Hawaiian pizza. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> A traitor. <laughs> mm, thin crust or deep dish? Ooh. Oh, deep dish. Yeah, deep 100%. dish. A thousand percent. Yeah. Mm. Hola, Dani Nicolás. Saludos desde España. Una pregunta para Nicolás. Hola, sí. Si, tuviera, si tuvieras que elegir solo una pintura de toda la historia del arte para deep salvar. Dish. Ah. <risa> ¿Cuál sería y por qué? Una pintura Así que uno dijera O que uno pudiera llevarse a esa pintura Voy, voy, a, voy a correr con esta, con esta propuesta Que uno pudiera utilizar esa pintura Como para explicar pintura A el resto de la gente Como, como si esa fuera La esencia de la pintura ah, Juepucha, está difícil hmm. Porque es que te voy a decir mis pinturas favoritas de toda la historia del arte. Las cinco. Yo ya yo he dicho esta, este top cinco muchas veces. So these are top five paintings uh, in, in our history for me. Eh, la balsa de la medusa, Rafted de Medusa, Jericho, increíble. Mm, Hendrik en el río de Rembrandt. O sea, de todas las pinturas de Rembrandt me gusta esa de Hendrik. Eh, me gusta eh, el niño de Mariano Fortuny, ese niñito, esa espalda de ese niñito que está tirado en la hierba, tirado sobre la hierba. El pie de Menzel, el pie de Menzel. Y la quinta pintura es el perro de Goya, y creo que me llevaría el perro de Goya, porque es absurda esa pintura, es ridícula, es como que no tiene, no tiene explicación racional esa pintura, entonces... Me fascina que exista una pintura así. Además es una pintura que la humanidad la tuvo como que reconstruir, porque pues esas, o sea, la pasaron de la pared después a una tela y, o sea, tuvieron que hacer un esfuerzo enorme por, por trasladarla, digamos, a, a, a la tela. Eh, y entonces se reconfiguró esa pintura, porque esa pintura en realidad no es lo que pintó, no es exactamente lo que pintó Goya. Y eso para mí es fascinante, como que la humanidad haya escogido resignificar una pintura. Es impresionante. Pero para mí es como de las imágenes más enigmáticas de la historia de la humanidad. O sea, yo hasta luego... No, no sé si estoy sonando así como súper hiperbólico, pero, pero me parece una imagen que, que no tiene sentido. Entonces, si, si voy a escoger una pintura, quiero que sea una que no tiene como una explicación... Eh, digamos, fácil, porque las otras pinturas todas se pueden explicar, incluso la, la, la de la balsa de la medusa de Jericó, pues es un acontecimiento eh, histórico, o sea, era una pintura casi reportage, era como, estaba hablando de algo que estaba sucediendo en ese momento, pero esta pintura de Goya, no sé, como que no le pertenece a nada, le, le pertenece como a todos los tiempos, es, es una cosa curiosísima, entonces sí. Estaba difícil, pero apenas pensé en el perro de Goya, dije, no, no hay, no, hay nada, no hay nada más chévere que esa pintura, honestamente, no, 
no me importa qué pintura me pongan enfrente, pero no, esa, esa pintura es, es una barbaridad. When you were talking about your top five, they said, no monkey pieces. What? The beast pieces, remember? El, el, el ex homo? Uh -huh. uh, no, 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 although I love her. I love the woman that did that. I love her. And Completely, and, and, and they obviously should have left it like that. What Nobody would have cared that? about that painting if that woman hadn't done that. Nobody would have given that painting like a second thought. So she made that painting be, you know. Probably more people visit that Jesus than ever before, ever, like centuries. So she was solely responsible for that. She's, she's incredible. What's the Hawaiian pizza equivalent in painting? Oh, wow, that's a good, that's a good <laughs> question. Like totally tacky, like the New Jersey of painting. Oof, and I can say that, by the way. I, I lived in Weehawken, so I can say that. I can speak like that um, about New Jersey. Uh, what is the tackiest paint? No, but I don't want this to be like, let's just, you know, crap on other artists. I don't want it to turn like that because I'm, I'm you know, if, if you've seen our painted lives, I don't think we ever, we very rarely, if ever, you know, make, make it about speaking, um, about other artists. I, I much rather celebrate other artists' work than just crap on other painters. I, I don't think that that's, I don't think that that's cool. So, uh, but, but, for the sake of argument, let me think. Let me give it this, like, like, a minute of thought. But also you're talking about the Hawaiian, Hawaiian pizza equivalent, like if it was the worst thing ever and I don't know but here are a lot of people that love the Hawaiian pizza so I would think more of a painting that is like people love it or hate it oh that's easy then uh, yeah. Renoir Renoir I know it's cliche to say Renoir um, but and I know that it became almost like a meme to not like Renoir but I don't like him I don't. I, I don't, and, you know, I, I, it's not as if I'm going, like, I'm going to make signs and, and I'm going to, you know, go and stand in front of, like, museums and tell people that Renoir is just in bad taste. But um, I've never been able to like his painting. Never, never. I just don't. I just don't. I, I don't know what it is, but it, I think there's a painting of a dog that I like that he did. I think that's my favorite painting of his, like, a little painting of a, of a dog. I think that one's like one? kind of, no, not really. No, there's another one, like a simpler one. Maybe that. Is it that? See, I don't even, I, I forgot even. <laughs> yeah, I just don't like him. I just, I've n I never liked him. And I've stood in front of hundreds of his paintings, just feeling bad because pe people make you feel bad. People go like, oh, okay, that's funny. Yeah, you're one of those people that says that Renoir is like terrible. And, um, and, and there's people that go like, no, I'm gonna you know, write about saying why Renoir is not really a terrible painter and, and it's just a bunch of, of noise when people think that they're being cool and they say that Renoir is terrible. I think he's terrible. I, th I, I really do. I think there's no way in hell that he's in the same conversation as, as Monet or Manet. I don't think so. I think it's, he, they, they're both like miles away from him. But yeah, yeah, he would be my, uh, my Hawaiian pizza for sure. The pineapple of the art world, Renoir. It, fit, it fits, it actually fits really well. But not the pineapple because you like pineapple. I actually like pineapple, yeah. I just hate it anywhere different than just the plain fruit that you eat. No, y el salpicón. En el salpicón, sí, de pronto. Oh. Pero es que el salpicón es más fruta. O Pero sea, como mezcla piña. de fruta, no me importa. Pero, digamos, piña en el pollo. Delicioso. Pollo, ¿Cómo se llama ese pollo? ¿Pollo Maryland? O pollo? pollo con piña, no sé. Es como con piña, creo. No sé. Uy, terrible. Delicioso. No, terrible. Puro pollo de motel. Nicolás, no. <laughs> Um, 
if you had to paint food, what would you paint? Do you consider it aesthetically pleasing? I paint I que pintado lasagna. I painted that eh, tray of lasagna, arandana? empty lasagna. I painted some uh, blueberries. I painted um uh I was going to say a scone, but it wasn't a scone um or a scone like uh, British people say. Um I painted um, pizza. I painted pizza. That, that's like the coolest one I've done, I feel, because it felt like a, a slice of pizza. Uh, but I think it's awesome. I think it's great. You know, it's a great subject matter. Angela Sung, Ango Mango. Oh, my God. If you don't follow her, just follow her. She, she does paintings of food that are incredible, incredible. Angela Sung in Instagram, Ango Mango. Oh, you painted Fruit Loops too. Yeah, I painted a few straggling um, Fruit Loops. Mm. Oh, uh, lasagna? La Por eso dije ah. lasagna cadaver. <laughs> Como así? I was listening. Oh, yeah, you, you never Sorry. listen. Yeah, you never listen. <laughs> Now you guys know what's up. <laughs> Camila says that you painted crumbs. And bananas. Oh, I like that one of the uh, little. That was a little cupcake that I think Fed ate. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And bananas like at the beginning. Oh yeah, yeah. Fruit, yeah. The banana, the the super ripe banana. I, I actually like that one. Um, no, I, I think it's great. I think nature is amazing. I don't think there's any subject matter that's that's not interesting to be honest. Um. I mean, a p part of the kind of exercise that we do when we say what you know those weeks that it, we say what should I paint and people you know send us ridiculous things to paint is is to sort of say there's a painting hidden anywhere I mean you could paint anything honestly and and it doesn't matter I mean today we're trying to make a painting out of an image that is just very that's kind of ridiculous and and you know finally I'm seeing the shape of my painting finally Um, and I think it's it's working out. So it's always just just to challenge myself to to believe that subject matter, you know, the subject matter of a painting obviously is is important. But it doesn't mean that it's um, that it's absolutely necessary for that subject matter to be like earth shattering, to be you know, like the the most important aspect of your painting. Like your painting doesn't have to be defined by your subject matter. I don't. Th think so. I think if you're intelligent about it, through your subject matter, you could speak about tons of other things. So there are subject matters that are super powerful, super powerful. I actually am I'm the sort of person that believes that there are even subject matters that don't belong to us and we shouldn't paint them, which sounds weird. And I know and that's a tough um, conversation to have. Um, but I, I do, you know, I, I, I think that the essence of when we try to push ourselves to to just about say, hey, let's paint anything or let's make a painting about anything. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter what you guys throw at us. Like, we'll, we'll find a way to try and make a painting out of that. And I don't think it speaks about my ability. I just think it speaks about painting being capable of, of, of you know, of producing some really wonderful things if you let it, like if you find, if you let it find its way, I feel. When you were talking about the Hawaiian pizza painting, they yeah. said, "What about the guy that did the shark in form formaldehyde? Or how se formaldehyde? Yeah, yeah, Damon Hurst. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, you know. And then some people adore Damon Hurst. I I think he's an idiot. I just I really do think he's an idiot. He's one of the few people that I I go like, it doesn't really matter. Because you know why I'm critical? Because it doesn't really matter what I think." You know, he, he's huge. He's the most famous artist alive. Like, that is undebatable. Um, so who cares? Like, he's never going to care about what I think or what other people think. So um, he has that personality. He has that ego. Um, I don't know. You know, when we were in Rome, we saw uh, a show at the Borghese, at the uh, Galleria Borghese, where the sculptures of Bernini were also, you know, um, 
were accompanied by Damon Hirst's sculptures. And it is a very strange thing to try and make sense of. And I tried. I actually gave it a shot, and I tried to make sense of things, and I tried to justify a lot of the things that I was looking at. It's, it's almost like um, I, I reminded myself of, of when I was like teaching where you have to give things a chance. Like you have to believe what you know people are trying to do, and you have to you have to give them a shot. But oh my god, I felt I felt really stupid after a while just um, giving some of those works a shot. It just doesn't it just doesn't make sense. It just I don't know. He he is he is a necessary evil. I feel. But I think sad. He's a good example of a Hawaiian pizza artist. No. Yeah, because no, people because love him. No, be- yeah, but I can have, I can have a slice of Hawaiian pizza. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I can, I can, I can tell you right now, I can, and I've had, like, I think it's very wrong, but I've had it. Um, but I, there's no way in hell that, you know, whenever I I read about something that Hearst says or does, that I feel like, oh yeah, there's an artist. Like, I don't know, I just. I don't like the guy. I just, I don't know. And they're saying Jeff Koons is in the same boat. Yeah, they're just, they like money. I think they were people that are very open about wanting to be rich, you know, through art. Um, Koons was, was, uh, Koons was not an artist. And, and he just saw in art the opportunity to, he was in real estate. He just saw in, in, in art, the opportunity to make millions of dollars, and he was like, he jumped at it. Um, and and obviously, our the the bigger art market, the the art world is set up so that people like that can do something, you know, can 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 have that attitude and can totally fit into what the art world expects. So, yeah, it's a sad it's a sad thing, but I don't know. They're saying Hawaiian pizza is way better. Than Damon Hirst. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we finally found a, a moment where I'm just going to agree and say, oh, yeah. I'll have that a thousand times, you know, before. I'll have a slice before, you know, if you, if you gave me one of his spot paintings that he's trying to push nowadays. I don't know if you've seen those those spot paintings nfts i think they are i don't i don't even know what he's doing with those tiny little spot paintings but if you gave me one of those i much rather have a slice of um of hawaiian pizza esta puede ser una pregunta un tanto rara pero Uy, vamos hoy es viernes <laughs> <laughs> pero crees que en un futuro lejano te estudiarían a ti y a no. tu pintura en los libros de historia no, del arte no 100% no no. O sea, sí. imagínate, tienen esta, no. este live para sí. <risa> de tu sí. sabiduría. Sí, de cuando, de cuando dijo que, que le gustaba más un, un, eh, Una pizza, un hombre vaca. Es que werewolf no lo podemos traducir. Aquí es hombre lobo, en español sí. es hombre lobo, entonces se, se entiende súper raro. Pero no, 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 no. No, no qué charro. No, que cojan que cojan oficio, hay mil personas más eh, interesantes, más chéveres de estudiar que, que yo. Have you thought about photography? I know you love Sally Mann. Yeah, I love photography, I love it. But um, I don't know, it's just, it's diff- I mean, if you, it's the same thing as, as sculpture. I, I, I would have loved to be a sculpture, but that's like another lifetime. That's, or maybe when I'm very old and I just, you know, I, I don't have to obey anything but my, you know, caprice. Um, I would love to do some sculpture. But, uh, but yeah, I used to love photography. And, like, even very, very old kind of um, obsolete photography that's dumb and expensive to try and do. Um, I did a bunch of wet plate photography. I love it. I absolutely loved it, but uh, but again, very time consuming, very expensive. Um, but I'll just leave that to photographers. I think that they, you know, that is their realm, and they do it incredibly. And you know, I'm just I'm I'm a painter that loves those things, but I think that I'll forever be a painter, and I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. 
Do you play video games? Yes. The new character in the new Far Cry game is called Danny. Really? I know that there's a um, there's uh, the what's the uh, crocodile, the alligator's name? I forget what his name is. And what's the little dachshund's name that has like no no legs? He's like in the little cart. <laughs> ah, creo que la protagonista es Danny. Si no estoy mal. I think the 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 protagonist isn't like you play Danny. Are lives like this cool? Because I think, I mean, they're a little bit different from, from what we have done um, throughout the year and 10 months it's going to be. Um, but I kind of like hanging out more than just, I mean, they're different. I'm not going to say more. I was going to say more than the um, kind of like produced videos where we have a voiceover and we, we have a theme. But I, I kind of like that the theme can be more fluid maybe let's call it that and that conversations are far more open and that it's real-time painting and that we can hang out you know it just becomes more of a physical space maybe i kind of like those things yeah they they're saying they like it good good i like the interactivity of the lives these are awesome i love this love talking to you both Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you, guys. I think we really we were talking about this, I think, yesterday, and we really, really like that, too. Like, being able to interact with you. That's super cool. Um, the guy in the picture looks happy. He but is. in the painting, I would I think know. he's being tortured. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. You're right. And I thought about that. In, 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 uh, do you... Do you know which guy he reminds me of? Danny, look at uh, Jerome Witkin. It's a really tough painting. So, so, um, so I would ask people to, if they feel weird about this, maybe look away for like a little bit. I mean, if you know Jerome Witkin's work, you know what he's about. If you don't like him, don't pay attention to this painting that we're going to show. Which one? If you like painting, it's the guy, it's a guy that's torturing another guy. I know, this is tough. This is tough. So... But again, you know, this is, I'm acknowledging, I know what Jerome Witkin is about. I know what Joel Peter Witkin is about. This yeah, one? Yeah, look at the guy in the back. Maybe you could um, oh, he just, looks alike. yeah, maybe you could just show the guy in the back. Not the guy that's, yeah, not the guy that's being tortured because that's like, this one? yeah, so maybe, maybe crop that guy yeah, if you can. Yeah. Thank you. So it would take me. Yeah, that one takes a little yeah. bit. Um. But yeah, I, I actually love Jerome Witkin's work. I really do. He was, he was the, the one reason, I've, I've spoken about this, but the one reason I considered doing an MFA, which I never did, but the one reason that I ever considered doing it was, was because Jerome Witkin was at Syracuse. He was the um, director at the, um, at the MFA program at Syracuse, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if he was the director, maybe not, but, but he was a very, he was there. And I could have worked, you know, under him. And, and that to me sounded amazing at the time. But I just, I didn't have money. So that was, <laughs> that was a very easy, <laughs> that was a very short-lived um, uh, desire that I had. Like a wish. I didn't have money. So, so I was like, okay, I could get a job and pay for rent and pay for, you know, my living expenses. Or I could try and get into some you know, dumb MFA that I, I'm going to spend the rest of my life paying. So I'm very happy that I didn't choose the MFA. Yeah, so there's the crop of the painting. Oh, okay, yeah. So there's the guy. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the painting. And forgive me if, it, like, maybe you guys were okay with, with us showing the whole painting. But it's just, like, it's a tough painting because it's about torture. And it's terrible because it's this guy is in the back and he's just covering his ear because, you know, he's trying to have this phone call while his, this other guy, you know, is just, like, screaming in pain. 
So it's a, it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a tough painting again. But I just, you know, I, I thought about that guy. I think that guy has this vibe, a little yeah, bit of this they vibe. Look alike. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I always associated with some. I have like a brain that just, I, I I just remember paintings, so I always tend to associate paintings with other paintings. So. Yeah, so they were saying that they like Jerome Whitkin's work a lot. Yeah, and I, I love him. You should allow for donations in your stream. Oh, oh. you guys are awesome. Thank you. No, we've, we've uh, considered that subscribe kind of button, that join button. What yeah, is it? Yeah, join. On I think it's called. Cool. Yeah, the join button on, on um, YouTube. On YouTube. But... Uh, I don't know. We're kind of dumb that way, I feel. I just feel like we are, we're like super happy with where we're at. Um, and we do want to grow, but we also love that we're small. We, we really like that we're a small channel because there are cool things about being small. You know, there are cool things about a, a community being, being kind of, you know, even though it is like thousands of people, the, the people that, you know, end up, interacting all the time are very few that's just how social media works but um i like that i think we both like that we're super okay with that so it's like we, we don't dream of like having a viral video or, or something like that to just you know explode our channel no we're like okay i mean we're always like super <laughs> um we're always like super shocked and surprised at, at you know, people that get millions of views or, or because it's so difficult. It is yeah. so, so difficult that it probably speaks more about those people just being amazing at understanding how to do content. I mean, that's not an easy task, to be honest. Um, there's people here in Colombia that are incredibly popular YouTubers. Um, and I would never shame those people into any, like, that's amazing. The fact that they, they were able to, to find you know that community and and do those things i yeah. hopefully things that they love um that's incredible that's not an easy thing to do but um but yeah but we we want to grow and develop hopefully but but we also i mean we we haven't done anything weird with our channel and and if it grows it grows like super slowly and it grows kind of organically and i think that we are okay with that like we feel super cool with that so yeah i think that it's more than that we like don't dream about being like super big yeah. yeah but like if it grows slow or fast or whatever i think it's cool yeah 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 we're not like forcing it so yeah exactly yeah um when I watch your videos, I don't feel like I'm watching a YouTuber. I just feel like you're talking to me naturally. Really that's love cool. the vibe. The vibe. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we. I think that because we approached it from a different place, like we're always gonna feel comfortable just being ourselves. Like we were concerned about the audio issues yesterday, but not really. I mean, it was just funny. Like we were just dumb and. We probably just don't understand the fact that we need like mixers or virtual or like software that works as a as a virtual mixer, um, and and it's it's okay. I mean, we'll work with what we have, and if we make mistakes, we'll make mistakes, and that's fine. Like we won't we don't feel bad when we make mistakes. Like um, there's been videos that the camera like the battery runs out and we didn't pay attention, or you know, tons of things happen. And we're not hard on ourselves. We're like, okay, let's just leave it there. Like people will understand. And and instead of just trying to hide it or anything, we'll just be like, hey guys, like we we ran into trouble, or, or we have we've run into trouble with our memory also. Um, and and yeah, they're all just learning experiences. But we're, we feel super okay just growing from them. So I'm kind of liking this. I, d I, I finally, I don't know if you guys kind of sensed 
a moment where it was starting to make s- like where the painting was was kind of kind of taking shape because for me it took a while Oof. maybe it's because uh, of all the wear cow talk but i i just uh, no I, ju- I just felt that initially it was a, a, a lot of like gesture um but it was very open gesture i i really didn't know where i was taking the picture and i think as soon as i um kind of acknowledged that it could be it could have like a darker tone to it um i kind of ran with it as soon as i saw that potential for this to be kind of a little bit weirder i was like okay let's just make let's make that painting and i'm okay with it because i didn't really know what type of painting i wanted to paint so if it became that then that's i'm i'm totally fine with that this little bit of machinery i th- that little motor there that's I don't care about that. Like, I mean, I care about it, but I don't care to spell it out. I mean, nothing in the painting is really spelled out. So um, there's, there's like a nice sense of liberty that I granted myself throughout the image that I feel it's kind of nice. It just, I, th- I think the painting just kind of happened. And there's something cool about that. There's something cool about not really understanding where a painting is heading. And you just keep going, keep going. And, and you tell yourself, it'll it'll get there like it'll show its head eventually and uh it it did and i'm kind of happy and grateful for that so but i think we're nearing the end of the painting so yeah yeah i'm I'm kind of okay with this today i feel like you sell your paintings for way under what they are worth which allows people like me that couldn't afford the your paintings to buy them so i think monetizing your channel oh i think the question isn't complete like because it says so i think monetizing your channel in ethical way Mm -hmm. and that's all maybe it's the worst idea ever (laughs) oh no no, i'm kidding i'm kidding no No, thank you you have 200 words or letters i think to write the comment okay no 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 thank you thank thank you so much i honestly all of the decisions that we've taken um, with with our channel, we've thought about them. Like we always think about what are we gaining from this? Do we really need this? Um, and um, we give it a thought, and we always we always say like, are we betraying like what we started? Um, uh, you know what the, the basis for the basis for the exercise for this whole exercise? Are we betraying that and? And if we find that it can be mis kind of misunderstood, or, or if it can, or if it's something that can't be easily explained, we we shy away from it. We go like, no, 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 we don't need to do any of that. Um, so the the core, like the DNA of what we do, is is going to remain the same. Like we want to make stuff accessible. We want to make it free to people. We we want to demystify what it is, what it means to paint. Painting is just you know this wonderful exercise but there's nothing really extraordinary about it like you're not an extraordinary human being just because you know how to paint that that is so not a thing so i i think that that we've we've been um faithful to those sort of ideas and um and if we can keep being kind of you know if we can um not betray any of that we'll we'll consider possibilities but the most important thing is always to make it available to people um to make it accessible and uh to make it open so that it doesn't feel like it's excluding anyone or it's an exclusive act so yeah he said monetizing it ethically is fine is what i was trying to say yeah thank you thank you um what do you guys think i think i'm done I think I'm actually done. Yeah, I like I like that. Um, at the beginning, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to put some some more information up there. There's a wholeness to the painting that I like. There's not any. There's no particular moment of the painting that I would say, okay, here is what's relevant about it, or here is like that that little kind of exclamation point in the painting. I don't think so. I think it's a painting that's kind of surrounded by choices by big bold choices so it's not um so there's 
it's more about the sum of its parts than any uh, any particular thing that's going on in the painting. I don't know if you guys would agree, but I just I feel that I feel strongly about that aspect of this this particular painting. But um, yeah, it's kind of nice. Yeah, it's dark. It's a little dark. Yeah. yeah. It does feel weird. It does feel a little strange. But I'm okay with that. I've, I've done plenty of paintings that are weird. So um, I'm kind of okay with that. I just thought it was going to be more kind of quaint. I think I, I thought it was going to be whimsical at the end or, or something like that. I thought I would do like a... Because it all started with just my wanting to to, um, to do a joke on, on the exercises that that um, that you, you guys really kindly suggested yesterday. But... Um, but it ended up being something totally different. So I like the contraption. I like these, this, these kind of legs of the contraption. Um, no, I, I think I'm, I'm happy with it. I think it's pretty cool. So let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. Any questions to, uh, to finish this week? Ivan dice, Gran, falta, grande, Ivan. falta la opción de hacer super chats, ¿no? O ¿Qué sea, es eso, Ivan? No sé qué es eso. Donar durante los videos. Ah, ¿eso, eso se llaman super chats? Sí, no sé. la verdad, Iván, es que tenemos que investigar un poquito más porque... Sí, no sabemos nada, no sabemos re mucho. ignorantes. Sí. Somos los youtubers más ignorantes de YouTube. Los youtubers. <risa> Somos la gente que menos sabe de YouTube en YouTube. Eh, sí. Pero no, gracias, sí. sí Vamos a mirar eso, pero seguramente yo, yo creo que para, para este... Para este proyecto no, 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 no lo haríamos. Yo creo que terminaríamos haciendo lo que siempre hemos hecho. Vamos a ver si para el próximo año pues, podemos ampliar un poquito las posibilidades, pero eso será el próximo año. Van Sant, yes, I'm saying Van Sant, yeah, sí, okay. très bon, très bon. <laughs> did you notice that there are ads now on the channel? Yes, yes. Van Sant, yeah. We, we spoke... Uh, ¿quieres, no, 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 ¿Quieres decirlo tú? Uh, Van Sant, we, we ended up... Um, very sadly having to put ads on the channel because YouTube had put ads on the channel without, without us uh, monetizing the channel. So YouTube does that. If They'll tell you, yeah, you can opt out of a monetizing program, but that doesn't mean that we eventually are not going to put ads on, the, on, on your um, videos. And, you know, I don't think our channel does so well that they eventually said, or the algorithm eventually said, okay, let's start putting channel Um, um, ads on, on this channel but with Danny we were super frustrated when we started seeing that you know we would always get ads um, in the middle or at the beginning of the video without us doing the uh, monetizing so we waited for like two weeks I feel that we kind of monitored if, if the videos were getting ads we actually even asked people um, yeah, and we, we did googled about it and yeah. we said that yeah what you said like they are going to monetize so You can opt to get a little bit of that money or they are going to take all the money of the monetization for YouTube. So, so yeah, we decided to, to monetize. And that's why. Do you guys know, do you guys know how, many, how much we make w out of monetizing? Let's do like a small poll, uh, like super quickly. How much do you guys think that we, because we're super open about this, so don't worry. How much do you guys think we're making off the ads like every month? We have to wait for the answers. I know, I know. So we're pa we're patiently waiting. <laughs> This is like dead space. This is like <laughs> super, super good uh, YouTube. Six dollars. <laughs> <laughs> They're saying six dollars. No, less a little bit more. Fifty, less than fifty. No, no, no. Fifty, twenty. We make nothing. No, we make a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks. So. Like two bucks. Two bucks. <laughs> No, no, we make a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks. So, um, so yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's not a lot. It, it makes you realize, wow, people that if we're a very small channel and a hundred bucks, like people that have millions of views, y you can understand how much money they can make. But, um, but yeah, our channel is small, so I don't think it'll ever break into, into anything that's like super mainstream. I don't think painting is mainstream, so... You know, my whole thesis is that painting is, isn't really mainstream. I know that people love to paint eyes with eyelashes or, you know, squirt kind of acrylic onto a surface and then make like a, like a, a night, um, uh, you know, a night scene with a bunch of trees or I don't know. Just 
just terrible paintings like that. But um, and those and those sort of channels and those paintings have you know tens of millions of views. But I think you know when you do a, a reflection, when you when you're trying to reflect uh, based on the painting act, that's not something that people find like super super attractive. I don't think it can be like ubiquitous. I would love for people to like people that don't really know anything about painting that you know feel like they've never understood painting to find a channel like ours i think that that would be super cool super super nice and if we could kind of bridge that gap that would be amazing but the truth is that that's very difficult that's very very difficult so so yeah that's um so yeah that that's the reason that you're you're seeing ads because we felt frustrated that we had avoided ads for like a year and a half and you know eventually google youtube just says hey i'm going to start making money and it's up to you if you want some of that money but we are going to start making money off your videos even if you are not willing to be part of this and that is frustrating i mean uh, the the part where we were not monetizing felt you know, the tiniest bit of it felt like you were sticking it to YouTube, like, you know, oh, we're doing this and we're making it accessible, so F you. And, you know, the reality is that they don't care. Like, they'll just see, oh, this is getting views, like, let's put an ad there. And it, it was frustrating, but we were like, okay, let's do it in our own terms then after that, so. Yeah, and I would like to say that um, we are really, really... Um, Grateful. Grateful <laughs> for the people that buy the paintings because we couldn't do the videos without them because if we were just earning a hundred dollars a month, like we, yeah, we couldn't no pizza keep, for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we're not against um, monetizing or people that want to monetize and make the channel grow bigger and bigger. But yeah, I think we are super lucky that we have that other part yeah like that other income with mm -hmm. the paintings so yeah but we just earn a hundred dollars so <laughs> so yeah, that's enough that's for uh, pizza reality. that's pizza that's pizza money for yeah, the month and i think that's also why we don't have like that urge of growing that mm. a lot of people have because if you want to live from youtube and you're earning just a hundred dollars like you cannot yeah. keep doing videos or... Yeah, you have to find a way to, to yeah, make them yeah, explode yeah. And, and, and try to viralize your videos some way. Yeah. Uh, like, desperately find a way. But, you know, we, we depend on people, on, like, the kindness and the support of people. So, and, and they've, you know, you guys have had a, our back since the beginning. So, yeah. that is super awesome. And also... Um, yes. Growing is super hard. Yeah. Yeah, like... People sometimes take for granted, like, oh, I don't know, that person has 8 million subscribers. Like, they think it's nothing, but 8 million is a lot. I, I, like, I cannot wrap my head around having 8 million people watching what you do. Yeah. So I have, like, 8 friends. Mm, yeah. So... <laughs> But yeah, yeah, like it's not easy because sometimes people shame YouTubers and yeah, I think it's not easy to, to get that amount of people following you. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be it. That's going to be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was fun. It was actually super, super fun. And um, I think it's a, it's a blast when we can have a really cool, fun conversation and for some, in some way, for some reason, a painting can happen. I think that that's awesome because, again, you know, if you could be surrounded by like-minded people or if you could just have fun with, like, a dumb conversation about cows um, beating bears because we all know that and we all agreed that they would definitely beat the bear, um, that's awesome. And if, again, if a painting can be, you know, the excuse to have those sort of connections and conversations – that like what there's nothing cooler than that that's super super cool so thank you guys for letting us be your company yeah you thank know. you everyone when when we always finish off by saying that on friday that you know we are grateful that you guys let us be your company and 
we always say that all we ask is that next week we you know you give us a chance again so that we can be your company and i think that's like super true like that that's a super true sentiment like that that for us is something that we have to earn i i don't think that that's something that you can just you know give to people um and i really do believe that the people that 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 um that consider us their company and that that um support us you know they they really feel like okay this is something kind of cool and special so you know let's let's be part of this so thank you guys we'll see you next week tell us if this is cool maybe we could do this next week and maybe it could center around drawing or something like that and we can just focus on drawing but um let us know if if, if it was uh, cool for you guys and and we'll um we'll definitely give it a, um give it a shot so thank you guys thank you everyone have a great weekend rest bye bye Bye.